Throw Gang, we are joined by the Margella Madame, Her Highness of the Hashtag, <laughs> the Boss Bitch of Berlin, the Tabby Titan. She must work at Guantanamo Bay how she's splitting these toes. <laughs> All this Rick got him mortified. Grand Dame of Deutschland, you're 0 for 32, she's 0 for 32 CD's nuts. Her closet must be 1950s America, how it separates the black and the white. The Consulting Queen, the Germain German, but with all these columns, she got to be Greek, or maybe she's Kiwi because she's always in all black. The interview imam, fashion director of O32C, and owner of the store and archive collection, Disrupted Berlin, Brenda Weischer. Did I say that right? Brenda, how the hell are you? Good, thank you. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words now. Are it you happens. overwhelmed? No, I'm crying. Can you tell? <laughs> I'm a big crier. Wait, tears of joy or oh tears of I don't know shame? what's going Scar on. Are you scared? A little bit. That was so impressive. Thank you. I fucked up a little there, but chef, chef's got me. I'll cut it out. Um... Well, I'm going to need this in writing after. Okay, yeah. We'll just copy and paste it over. Th this is your new byline, <laughs> yeah. presumably. I think because I made AI write one for me and I didn't really like it, but this is amazing. <laughs> what did the AI byline say? Um, it misspelled my name. <laughs> a couple of it's a it bad just, start. No, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty bad. But this one, I mean, amazing. Wow. I'm very flattered. Thank you. Well, we're Besides flattered that you're yeah. here to do the show. On your last day in New York. Yeah. Yes. Our new best friend, Brenda, or Miss Hashtag. Miss Hashtag. Nasty. <laughs> the first thing we want to do is a little fit check okay. for us and the audience at home. You're going to mm -hmm. walk us through the totality of everything that mm -hmm. you're wearing today. The mm -hmm. choice for you, my friend, is do you want to start top down or do you want to go bottom up? Which one was the cop thing? <laughs> you didn't I heard do your about research this. or No, no, I heard about this. And then my comeback would have been, if I got it wrong, my comeback would have been, I don't live in a country with police brutality. Ooh. Okay. That's nice. So you want, do you want to just, let's run it? So you say top down, <laughs> right? You say top down. No, no, no I can't, I can't practice jokes <laughs> like this. It's okay. already, it's, it's already <laughs> over. Okay. So I made a big mistake. Yeah. Um, I based my outfit on my jacket okay. and now I'm not wearing it. Yeah, but you are in the fit pick. Yeah. Just oh, not okay. the video. Okay, because my main thing is always either jacket or bag. So this is like giving nothing. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's giving nothing. <laughs> it's giving nothing. But my jacket is Michael Kors Era Celine for yeah. Winter 2001 Ooh. Runway. Looking like so, Trinity up in oh this God, bitch. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I found it on Vestia Collective for such a good price. And for any, there's always archive. And then there's, you have a runway, Vogue runway picture of it, which mm. is like the ultimate goal. Um, I'm wearing that, which is a trench. Do I have to describe what it looks like? Uh, uh, if Columbine you want. It's Columbine Spring Summer 99. Yeah. We can pull up the book runway picture after. If <laughs> what you're year like was it? Sorry. <laughs> fall I think winter 2001. That one. Oh, shit. You I look like a school shooter is what <laughs> we're yeah, trying to say. to say. <laughs> which, again, that's something we, we have won. in America. Yeah, you, you don't guys have don't that. necessarily oh. have in Germany. Yeah, yeah. don't it's worry about it. It's our it's our greatest <laughs> cultural export. So it's it's a trench coat. I think it's look number six, but I'm not quite sure. Damn. Um, Damn. You must own a archive collection. Collection. Mm. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> well, anyways, Michael Kors <laughs> era Celine was amazing. Like, super nice. Do people not um, recognize it? Is it one of those, like, kind of, like, ten years that's underrated or overlooked? Because everyone's always like, oh, Tom Ford Gucci. Yeah, I think it's super underrated. I mean, I understand how he maybe, he built his own legacy and he chose to be in this oh, kind of rich. fashion. Oh, my was he right God, before amazing. Phoebe or was there also something in between? In between, but he was at Celine for quite a while. He's getting those basic bitch bags. <laughs> yeah, no, fully. <laughs> Anyways, that's my <laughs> trench coat. So that was like the main part of the outfit. That wait, where where do I go? You're going it? middle out, which <laughs> is totally <laughs> fine. You're all over the place, dude. You're, all You're over going the place. by based on. So I think this is the metric system or something. Yeah, I don't right. know what's going on. By what's price, the next maybe? kilometer? <laughs> maybe by price. Okay. Reselling price or what I got it for? I don't know. Ooh. Oh well, you don't have to. You could be gauche okay. and tell us. My bag is fall winter 2011 Chanel patchwork tweed bag, which you purposely did not want to have in the picture. But and now we are talking about yeah, it. I wanted to wear it yesterday to the Met um, preview thing, but then my friends told me wearing a flat bag of Chanel is the most basic thing I could have done. Oh, really? So now I'm wearing it today. Did you wear a lot of Carl era shit to the press preview at the Met yesterday? No, full Rick. Okay. But a, a, a Chanel bag. No, a bunch of Rick shit. Was, it, was, <laughs> Anna, was Anna mortified? Uh, she always looks like she has <laughs> nothing going. Like I don't know. Do you know her personally? No, I've been in the same room with her a bunch of times, but I've okay. never said hi. But, also, what but do you dead say? behind the eyes, regardless. Me too. I mean, like the <laughs> same. But no, what do you say? Hi, I'm. Hello, Anna. Hi, I'm Brenda. Hashtag nice to meet you. No. You like my Michael Kors? <laughs> <laughs> do you like my Michael Kors? <laughs> Anyways, okay, my outfit. I'm wearing a Rick Owens Lilies top, like from the Lilies line, and I have this. 15 times because it's the best top ever. It's like a... You have a whole rotation. 
Yeah, I mean, all in the same color, but like different materials. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm wearing a Peter Doe silk Your boy. shirt. Yeah, Your one of my best friends. Your domey. Um, and mm-hmm. I also just threw this on so I could say I'm wearing Peter Doe. Mm. I w- th- That's th- nice of you. It's called supporting the homies on this side. Yeah, exactly. And we exactly. love that. Because I feel like Rick and Michael don't really need the shout outs from me. But Peter this. needs a little juice. Oh, no, but he deserves it. I mean, Michael mm. might need a little fucking like credit or like clout from like a cool girl, you know, because again... You just yeah. think Michael Kors, you think just the fucking bags and the watches. Yeah, right? the push a T line ain't a bitch living who said I could, or I said I bought her Michael Kors or something like that. I fucked it up, but anyway, <laughs> that's Way a wrap for you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what are the pantalones? Uh, they're also Rick, uh, silk yeah. pants. And I mean, they should have been steam, but I'm traveling, so I feel like I have that excuse. You've um, been on the road for like three weeks now, right? Yeah. I mean, I try to come to the US once a year. Am I not loud enough? No, it's okay. okay. You're too loud. No. Uh, do you laundry or do you just buy new shit? Like, what do you or do you pack three weeks worth of stuff? I'm now into the packing cubes from TikTok. Have you seen that? No. no. <gasps> Tell us more. Are you kidding me? Okay. No. <laughs> it's like packing a TikTok cubes life hack that actually works. Because it works. It's literal packing cubes. Okay. It's my only Amazon purchase I've done since a year. Thank I you think. for your service. Mm. Of course. Um, it's packing cubes, and you roll everything up. You fill them like to the rim, and then there's a zip. Well, I mean, there's not really much to it. But it's <laughs> and it's also, quite literal. It's a cube that you <laughs> use to pack and you can fit more shit and be I efficient. Wear, I think <laughs> <laughs> as a guy with like tailoring, it's a lot harder to roll everything up. But for me, most of the stuff I have is cotton or silk that you mm. can like steam But up. the rumpled silk is fine. It's we're, yeah. we're quiet luxury, you know, understated. I thought I was more... I'm so over the quiet luxury thing. I was giving <laughs> gothic go means coastal grandma. Because okay. It's kind of a PJ vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Like a witch. Like a witch. <laughs> <laughs> what do you wear to the beach? Witch core. On your witch shit. Who says I go to the beach? Oh, Ooh, yeah, do yeah. Germans go to the beach? Yeah, man. The bigger the German, the smaller the Speedo. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. Germans love the dry heat. That is insane. I've never heard that. <laughs> is Speedo American German? Thing. No, but just like... Speedo. You guys love to fucking... You, like, you guys love to, uh, you know, throw on the grape smugglers. Yeah, show off the bratwurst. Yeah. Anyways, back to my outfit. <laughs> yeah. And I'm wearing, I, I mean, I took off my shoes, which I appreciate. Uh, Falke. What's that? It's our, like a plant. I don't even know if they're German or Austrian. It's our wool Ford. Okay. Yeah, you, this is above our page. You lost us. Your go-to yeah. sock. Yeah. Falke. Falke is like, I mean, it's like the Rimova. It's like the, I mean, it's. Oh, Falke is so now you're boring. speaking my language. Yeah. Isn't oh. Falke what sweet, like Swedes, like they stop for. Afternoon cake and a coffee is not FICA. That's FICA. No, okay, it's F A L K E. Okay. I'm sure. I'm sure you. The audience is taking it. notes. Yeah, they can do yeah, their Google no, Re- yeah. real quick. Do you own a Remova? Is that what you travel with? Yes. Oh, wow, Hell yeah! Let me get a let me get a little pound there. Oh, are we supporters? Oh, hundred percent. He not so much. No, I mean it was. A, I think it was really smart of LVMH to buy them. Mm-hmm. They're doing amazing. Mm, I think they did it overdid the collaborations a little bit. Uh, yeah. Point, thanks, thought, Alexander. <laughs> thanks, Alexander. Thanks, Alexander. Um, he's no longer there, right? He's at oh, Tiffany. Oh, he's at Tiffany, but he's he at was the he one was, who did Palace was, Supreme. Which is <laughs> why now there's Tiffany and Nike. I think he's just mm-hmm. like a... An idiot. He's a hype. He's a hype. He's a hype. He's yeah, he his, sucks. I would do the same if I were him. Like, no. Like, make your teenage dreams come true. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Like, everything he thinks is cool. If you're cool. stunted emotionally, yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah. A straight up Peter Pan <laughs> yeah. of right? the Arnaud family. Right. Yeah. I think um, you nailed it. I also, on that note, I always think LVMH would buy Birkenstock. Ooh, yeah. Birkenstock. Same but they're like too humble to ever do something like that. I feel like, uh, they're, corporately they're speaking, into, anyone can be bought. The, well, everyone does have a number. That's fair. I have a number. What's what your is number? it? What's your number? <laughs> Depends on what you want. <laughs> to wear, oh yeah, to wear Michael Kors <laughs> in 2023. Uh, I actually would love to interview him. Okay. Interesting. That wasn't the question, yeah. but okay. okay. Anyways, nice job deflecting. Question. My socks are fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the shoes, the big fucking stompers that you left at the door. Thank you very much. I forgot the name. I mean, it's Fall Winter 21, Rick. Mm. Beetle, the Bozo, Tractor. I don't tractor. Know what the, I think they're the tractors. They're like vi- very high up. They're gigantic. How much do they weigh? I don't know, but I always wear them at the airport because it's too f- um, heavy to get in my remote. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll put you um, over the limit. And I have to take them off every time. The remote <laughs> itself is fucking 75 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I don't do the silver. Okay. Black, oh. matte. Mm, Interesting. Understated. Yeah. yeah, I mean, of course, black for you, right? Yeah. Like, that makes but total sense. But at the TSA check with the shoes, you get bullied. 
Because the, I mean, the security they never get your style. Oh, you wouldn't get those, it. Yeah, right? <laughs> they look at you like you're a fucking freak, probably. Smuggling drugs. <laughs> okay. I mean, I have the, the souls. big souls. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When was the last time you wore any color besides black and white? Can you remember? Are we done with my outfit? Uh, no. 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 I'm no, just, no, no. I'm okay. Just yeah. Interjecting um, real I think quick. I think I'm done now. Uh, I think ten years ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what it was? No. No. Well, we're not done with the outfit. I used to wear like gray, navy, beige. Oh. I wasn't oh, my beige. Yeah. Gray, beige. Uh, <laughs> I was in my beige era for a little What about the bit. watch? The only non-black thing visible that we can see. That's it's, shining. Yeah, I, I don't wear jewelry ever, or at least not when I'm traveling. I have a tongue piercing and I have a Rolex. Uh, Is the tongue piercing Rolex as well? No, I <laughs> wear <laughs> that's a boarding school souvenir. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> they usually are. <laughs> they usually are. Yeah, fake ID and everything. Uh, oh, it's a you? perpetual date just. I just turned 30. No, no, no. How old were you when you got the tongue piercing? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, either 15 or 16. Damn. With, like, the most botched fake ID ever. Damn. Yeah, in Canterbury, UK. <laughs> Asking yeah. a woman her age within the first 12 oh, minutes I, I mean, of the I podcast. Guess, <laughs> how old was when you got the tongue piercing? Damn. I gave it up for free. Canterbury, UK, the fucking tongue piercing capital of the world. Yeah, was yeah. the Rolex a kind of, like, I've made it moment? You know, I'm this fashion director, girl boss. <laughs> No, I just, I don't really invest in jewelry at all mm-hmm. because I'm too scared to lose it. Um, and I mean, the watch is the one thing you don't really take off. At least sure. I don't. So I'm well, it looks fantastic. Uh, what about the bra and panties? If any. Um, it, no bra. I have okay. no boobs, so I don't really need one. Um, my <laughs> underwear is from my friend Hannah Richtman. Do you know the break, the shop, the break? Yeah, it's she close to it. here, right? Yeah, I mean, they ha- I think she's moving now or they had to close because the landlord raised the rent to like mm. 18K. But um, she does underwear now and it's called Get Gush. Get Gush? Get Ooh. Gush. Sounds nasty. I, I don't know. know what Gush Gushy. means. Uh, gush means wet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wet vagina. Amazing. Get okay. wet. <laughs> amazing. English is not my first language. Um <laughs> But yeah, she does this brand called Get Gush, and they just launched, and she sent me a bunch. All right. So this is now my, you know when Justin Bieber said, this interview is like 10 years old, his first Calvin Klein um, like press tour, and he's like, oh, I just throw mine out, and like they send me new ones, the boxers. Oh, shit. That's me with Get Gush, basically. Oh, okay. Are you stuffing them like Justin Bieber? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Did he do that? Or was it yeah, Photoshop? they photoshopped his whole wiener schnitzel. Yeah. I know about the photoshopping his like back, what are these muscles called? Like the Traps. Lats. That was so quick. The lats, the no, traps. The, the, the traps, no. right? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe both. I mean, shit, dude. Do it all. Well, now his fucking face is paralyzed. All right, and you're Ooh. sipping on some uh, cold brew or just iced coffee yeah. from the cafe down the street here. Fit check, drink check, complete. It's complete. Yep. Brenda, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the podcast. So you've been in New York coming up on two weeks. You're just in L.A. for a week, yeah. right? You're doing your whole Well, American I tried portafors. to meet up with you guys also. In LA, mm-hmm. oh, we were so what busy. Are you, what are you trying to waiting. say? That we we're so like... busy waiting for rappers to cancel on us oh, yeah. that we just couldn't couldn't make <gasps> Who it. Who canceled? Tyga. Yeah. Well, he actually, loves he any press ever. That's so strange. He wasn't aware of what the time commitment was, so yeah. there was a miscommunication. Oh. Yeah. He has a very nice voice. He is. Um, <laughs> no, I like think his so. like rapping, his rapping. No, voice? when he speaks, he's oh. like very calm. Taste, taste, taste. Um, He's 10, really 10, around at Fashion Month page. now. He what? He's really around at Fashion Month. Dude, now. he's like every he's like all over Paris with fucking Avril. Mm. You yeah. know? On it's like a weird shit. it boy status for Are a guy they still that's together? Like, I think so. Presumably. Cute. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Shout out to them. Uh, wouldn't know because we weren't able to ask him. But you were in LA for yeah. a week. You were in New York for two weeks. You kind of as as a as a journalist, as just a curious person, as a fashion obsessive, your mm-hmm. eyes are always open, taking it in. My question for you, our question for you for the audience listening at home, do American guys dress well, just typically speaking? No, you can't generalize like this. Oh, I think even, doing? no. This whole podcast is generalizing. Do American, on. I think um, once you're into fashion, yes, but I would say the whole, if you're generalizing like this, people, I mean, I'm in my pajamas today, so I can't really. Your Rick uh, pajamas, your Rick PJs? And my Rick PJs and Peter Doll. Um, yeah. I think in general speaking, like when you're out, in like at the airport or traveling, I think Americans are in general are very casual dressing. Mm. Too <laughs> casual. Way too casual. Flip flops and jorts. <laughs> Fully. Foot- and football jerseys. Fully. Open toes at the airport is crazy to me. Okay, Miss Birkenstock, Arizona's okay. outdoors. Yeah. With socks. Yeah. With socks. Yeah. With socks. That's um, fair. How do? No, I. I don't want to. How do Americans? What about okay? What about like guys? What about American guys that do think that they're into style? Like, what do you think? Like when you're roving around, when you're at Finelli's, when you're at fucking the Fear yeah. of God show, 
when you're at Dover Street, like, what do you, well, what, I are think... you what are your generalizations there? What's hurts and feelings? <laughs> <laughs> or big people up. I don't know. No, what I'm super impressed with is actually the younger generation of Gen Z guys who love fashion and talk to their friends about fashion and are unafraid to dress up. And I Whoa. feel like even with, are you Gen Z? No, but we, oh, oh God, <laughs> no. no, 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 please. I would never, but I'm saying we inspired a generation. Fully. <laughs> no, but fully, I think it's still so niche. So, so when straight I, guys that aren't scared to be called gay. F- no, but literally. So I think yeah. it's seeing this now, like here in New York and in, in the streets or Lower East Side and Dime Square, the people that I'm seeing, they're also like crafty and someone like will tell you the whole story about how they ripped up their shirt and sewed mm. it back together. I they think... They'll tell you because you're holding a camera in front of their face <laughs> and they're doing a TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe I that kid, also. I but I think the one thing you can't hate on is when someone puts effort into something, right? So mm. when you see someone like a, like fully thought through their outfit and this makes them comfortable, so that doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what, what style it is. What about trying too hard, though? Because that's a whole separate type of... Can you hate on someone for trying, though? But again, trying too hard, too intentional. Oh, my God. We had a... Have you been to this restaurant, Casino? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, we're going we're there we're tomorrow going night, night, actually. Yeah. Okay. All of the waiters, they're like super cool. And then the next day we see this guy that waited on us in the train. I think like M train from Marcy to to the city. And he was on a fake phone call, like so loud. Of talking about, he, I think he also saw us talking about all the people he's like hanging out with and wait, dropping wait, all these f- names. <gasps> what? That, wait, 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 trying yeah, so a, hard. This isn't like a phone call. Like his phone okay. was blank. This isn't a I mean, fashion. No, fo- you, you know when someone's on a fake call. This isn't call. a fashion faux pas. This is a mental illness that we're talking about right <laughs> now. I've this done that just before. What, trying to fucking, you've done it. Yeah, for sure. Why? Like if you're like trying to like avoid an extra, it's like oh sorry, I'm on the phone. Uh, trying not to get killed on the street, uh, mostly well, as a yes, woman. As a woman <laughs> yes. walking alone at night, that's yeah. one thing. That's self-preservation but, versus clout chasing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so trying to hide for me. I mean, with with fashion, no, it's trying to hide is always the character, no? Yeah. The outfit, trying to hide, I don't know. I think I like that. I would rather always like disagree with someone than someone not having an opinion, right? So yeah. even if I hate your outfit, I think it's the flip-flop at the airport thing is worse. Mm, yeah. Don't you think? Absolutely. Well, I just think it's disgusting. Open toes, open and toes, that's or what I shorts said. on the air on in airplanes. He just said, "Okay, Miss Arizona," to me. Well, no, at the, at the on the airplane, you're right. Birkenstock. Oh. Okay, Birkenstock. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. about? Is there anything that you've seen that like you've really liked that you wish that guys in um, Europe or Germany could like actually take cues from when it comes to American American boys? I think now there's just a lot more color, mm. right? I see all the Here. guys in there. Yeah, dress shirts and. Bodhi, I don't know how to pronounce Bodhi. 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 So I think... Um, it's pronounced garbage. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> if, if, even if I don't like it, I like that it's a bit more colorful now. Yeah. I think. How do you feel as a goth witch? A goth I don't... As a crow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as a crow I'm, person. <laughs> I'm very conflicted with what to say to this, because on the one hand, I want to say I don't judge, but I don't. I judge everyone. Sure. But I'm, I'm never offended by someone else's colorful outfit. I don't okay. have to wear it. Is that something that guys in Berlin, though, could, like, replicate and not look like a straight-up I mean, clown? Berlin is so stuck in the rave aesthetic. Like, everyone's all black. It's mm-hmm. kind of sad. I say this as a, you <laughs> right. know, but um, it makes the whole... I mean, when everyone kind of blends in together, it's a bit sad, I think. Mm. Mm. A bit drab. Power in numbers, though. Yeah, I you guess know, so. You got that going for you. Yeah. What about so, so that gets dangerous with Germans. It does, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, what about, so we, we did link up at Finale's and went to the Sandy Lang event. You're like, I yeah, wish I they would there. film you that, I mean, <laughs> what, he's me still laughing. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, him laughing 30 <laughs> seconds later is his own joke? <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, the people know. The oh, people the people know. know, okay. What about American It Girl fashion? Because you were saying that you really wanted to, you've been, you've been talking about Dime Square a lot. You've mm-hmm. been talking about, you wanted to go to the Sandy Lang event and kind of check out like the quirky, cute girlies. Um, how would you define American It Girl fashion right mm-hmm. now? We just had the fucking New York Mag issue about It oh, Girl true. come out, like... Oh, yeah. Okay. Also, just again, for my generalizing, I have only been to L.A., San Francisco, and then New York. So well, nothing two, in between. Two out of three ain't bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just like, I've, I've seen nothing in between. Um, there, I th- there ain't much, sister. There ain't much? I don't think so. You gotta get your ass to Miami. Miami. I think you oh, I've fun. been. <gasps> I've, I went to my first at Basel, Miami oh my in God. December, and I had the best time of my life because I don't see the shit in Berlin, you know? So right. for oh, me, yeah, it's, it's everyone insane. was like, oh, you're going to hate Miami so much. This is so entertaining to yeah. me. So entertaining. But you're laughing at, not laughing with, right? Did you see your first BBL? 
baby's first BBL. I have never felt more insecure about my body ever. Really? <laughs> well, that's a shame. Um, oh, Sorry my new besties that. are also the Claremont twins. Oh, mm -hmm. speaking oh. of BBLs, yeah. yes, yes. that was that was my that was my segue. Yeah, they each um, got their own booth at the Fear of God show. <laughs> One for each cheek. We need four they seats look for the twins. Fucking amazing. <laughs> They look they were so in Rick, amazing. Right? They were in Rick Hedge Toe? They are always at Rick and they are always backstage at Rick. But if you're of God, they were in, in yes. like the. Uh, I think it's a, always a mix of like Rick and then some boutique. You know, these. Fashion Nova. No, like a. <laughs> yeah. It's always like a female name, like Kendra's Boutique, Haley's got got Boutique, it. like gotcha. this but kind how of. Do you break, so, how do you break down It Girl, the American It Girl fashion right now? Climate you, Twins. <laughs> yeah? I love them. Fire. No, American It Girl fashion. Well, I think. What I see here is still a lot more quirky, right? We went to the Sandy Liang Liang event yep. uh, last week. I, th I see a lot more bows, just more playful, I guess. Mm. But then It Girl is like someone different for everyone else. Like in, in the Upper East Side, it's still Lauren Santo Domingo. Mm. It's still, so I think everyone has their own like queens here. I what is it in Berlin? Is it, is it also just the fucking crow, crow vibes? Crow core? Um... <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. Berlin is very. It's it's really just like what do you wear to Berghain, and then people just wear that out and about now. Well, if the night's gonna end there, regardless, you know. Yeah. Dress for the job you want. <laughs> Whatever hides the stains the best. You know what I mean? <laughs> which is not really black. Well, I know. Yeah. Well, which is ironic. Yeah. Better yeah. than better than navy. <laughs> yeah. Pray there's no black lights in attendance. I'll oh say my that. God. My first outfit to Berghain was actually amazing. I was 17. Do you, did you guys have the era where people were studying, putting studs on their Converse? Mm. Sounds like it's very like Coachella, like 2012. Yeah. No, like okay. you do it yourself, like DIY. Etsy. Oh, like yeah. DIY punk shit or like, yeah. but like pop punk shit. But like, okay, I have to show you a picture later. Please. Um, I was wearing cheap Monday jeans. Topshop Kate Moss collaboration out. faux leather jacket. Checks mm. out. Stolen American apparel top. Stolen American stolen apparel scarf. Stolen from a store. Stolen from yeah. a boyfriend. Stolen, stolen from a store. Okay. Everyone used to steal an American apparel. You're a shoplifter. No longer. I've retired. <laughs> but um, I was. Because American apparel, when they launched in Germany, they didn't have the... What's, what are the beepers? Like the metal like, detectors like, things? Yeah. Or the, yeah. scan, the scanners? Yeah. Yeah. So you would just go you in, just put everything shit? on. I'll take a couple of these. Oh, every hot girl you've ever dated stole at American apparel. Really? I think so. So it was like, they're like low heads, but at American apparel? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Hey, yeah, let's go rack some <laughs> dove. <laughs> but that was one of the last times I wore color because that was this oh. American apparel purple. Mm. Oh my God. Speaking of Justin Bieber, the fucking Ameri was it. American yeah. Power purple hoodie. Probably oh, yeah. stole it because of Justin Bieber. Wow. Um, but yeah, and the white converse with the like silver studs on the side. And I was 17 and my fake ID said I was 21. What drugs were consumed that night? I didn't take... I didn't... I don't think I did anything. I also couldn't afford anything. But <laughs> you I was... <laughs> you broke for drugs. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I mean, I quit any, I quit any kind of drugs uh, about five years ago. But even before, I rarely did anything. So I mostly had my Fiat 500 parked outside of Berghain so and then DD? drove home. Oh, my God. GD? What's that? Designated, designated driver. driver. You would drive no. people home because you weren't No, myself. Up. No, no, oh. no. Who would no. drive you? No. I drove myself. Yeah. Oh, okay. But you, oh, oh, you would <laughs> drive other people. No, no free rides. Uh, no free rides. No free rides in <laughs> <and> a Fiat. <laughs> well, also, I'm sober. So I leave at 8 a.m. maybe on Sunday morning and everyone else is there until Monday morning. Like, God you don't have man. the stamina yeah. at some point. Anyways, that was my first backhand outfit, and I went there to meet an ex-boyfriend. And did you guys hang out with like older people when you were teenagers? So you had to lie to like no, make yourself not cooler. Okay, I did. So I obviously told everyone, "Oh, I've been meet you inside." Mm. And backhand is so big, you kind of have to know where to go. Don't go to the basement. And yeah. this whole night, I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I'll meet you there. I'll meet you there." I had no idea where I was going. <laughs> It was fake bad. Fake it until you make it. Fake it. Yeah, yeah I did fake it. But I got in with my Converse and my stolen American apparel. Are you still going to Berghain Ber now? Uh, yes, but I would say maybe once every two months, three okay. months. And are you going in like full Rick and, and Peter Doe or do you not want to? Like, yeah. This is something we talk about. Is like You don't want to oh, wear your best things. shit out because it gets ruined. It gets yeah. spilled on. It gets torn up. I have to say now I'm at the point of my life where I get... Even with Tavis, I don't have to be careful anymore because they gift me them. Ooh. I know. It's my biggest flex. Big fucking flex <laughs> yeah. alert. Yeah. Um, Splitting toes like she's hot <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> I took that out of the intro because I thought it might be too offensive. I'm but still no, not. I'm not. not on the <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just um, confirming two people laughed and one didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on video. Okay. <laughs> so right. between LA and New York, mm -hmm. which city dresses better? In your expert opinion. Yeah. You just had boots on the ground. Doing recons, R and D, stomping around. Well, I think it's 
the le leisure where it's kind of a flex in LA, right? Like I don't have to be in an office. Sure. I just have like a sunset tower yeah, meeting at employed. 8 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> like it's that is. <laughs> but I employed. think I'm I love a jacket and boot like those are the most important parts for me in an outfit and that mm -hmm. you only see in new york and la is cool for a week but then i think it gets a bit boring Ugh. the oh, casual absolutely. everything I mean, is even pushing it in in our opinion i loved it there i also i mean i got you like, were staying at the sunset tower yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's <put it> <laughs> which is haunted i think but um in the end i think why new is york it haunted style. you see a ghost yes oh really what happened no, I don't know. Was it's the just the vibes are off. No, no Cursed? one was wearing. <laughs> the vibes were off, like in the hotel. I still, I love it there. I think it's the most comfortable bed in the world. Right. But like, it, it's very dark. Mm. I don't know. Was this before or after you stole eight pairs of slippers? <laughs> Did I tell you that when yes. we went? Oh my god! No, I just guessed that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> also Sunset Towers, your new American Apparel. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> maybe you haven't left behind your cle your kleptomaniac past. Yeah, just no, yet. those were for friends. I think it's a flex. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I just steal for friends. Yeah, so. if your friends are starving, it's okay to steal them some slippers. She's Fully. Robin Hood of fucking yeah. hotel slippers, <laughs> Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry Lorenzo. Um, what was the question? How many pairs of slippers did you steal from the Sunset Tower? Three, three sets. Okay, three. Okay, so yeah, six slippers. <laughs> Oh, we're round. Okay, I mean, <laughs> that's just mad. And wouldn't steal a single slipper, but I um, you can't. Yeah. What about for your one-legged friend? He's got to hop around in a fucking sunset tower slipper. Not I have all a very diverse friend group, but I don't think I have a one-legged friend. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Things yeah. might get crazy at Bergheim one night, you know. Mm, sure. <laughs> Brenda, what are some trends you see happening across Europe and the UK as well mm -hmm. that Americans aren't fully tapped into yet that you think maybe like we could. It is something that we could get into. Yeah, some forecasting. Let's start this like transatlantic discourse here, and, an idea exchange. Mm, yeah. Reading the news would be a trend. <laughs> All right. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Bars. I'm kidding. Bars. <laughs> well, I got my news um, on Vice, and that's fucking <laughs> RIP. <yeah>. So. <laughs> well, I think with the internet, I'm. I think any trend can be for anyone, and everything is so easily ac accessible sure. now that it kind of everything transfers to everything it's super so, democratic it's never yeah. been more democratic it's never been yeah and then i don't know what you guys think does it get more niche or is everything becoming the same kind of blur because i can't tell i go either way i think it's both i think it's yeah. it's very easy for the flattening of the aesthetic you can see like okay this guy's just like you know getting dressed off instagram A statistic but then but then because anybody has access to doing their own deep yeah. dives like anybody in fucking omaha could dress like a crazy person from burkheim you know if they wanted to yeah. If they wanted to. Yeah, I mean. I think it depends on who you ask. Yeah. Because right. I think guys like us are listening to the show, and James might laugh at, at me saying this since uh, I tend to wear a lot of popular things. But as that curve flattens. Define popular you thing. Are you mainstream? Oh, no. Well, it's, 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 we're popular. Yeah. Oh, we're just I'll popular. I apologize for being popular. I'll, okay. I'll be mainstream before I'm lamestream. But I just mean, like, nice. as, you see the, as you see the curve. Yeah, I'm, gonna I'm so it. excited <laughs> to see this happening in real time. <laughs> Um, but his broken brain. Wow. Work. But as the curve flattens and like us in the audience sees the barrier of entry, you know, go subterranean. Like you can then be more intentional in your weirdness, and you can lean into it, and then you look like a freak if that's what you want. For sure. Yeah. And I think there's a definitely a subset of guys that want to differentiate themselves from like the flattening, from the mainstream, if you will, the by, get, page. by getting weirder. By getting weirder. By trying new things. By like yeah. By, yeah. by fucking up even and like. You know, mm -hmm. and messing up their fit, and that's fine. Oh, like intentionally it. ugly, and then there's like post irony. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Turning your favorite that. tea into a crop top, and you're like, "What did I just do?" But you did it. <laughs> well, you, you done that? Oh no, yeah, that's me with any Rick pant ever. Because oh, yeah. you have to, you know, you have to cut off everything because it's too long. You don't have a tailor that would just hem this for you like a normal. <laughs> have you seen? I mean, do not look under this table. Um, no, it's me with my kitchen scissors, <laughs> obviously. So one leg yeah, is why? way longer than the other. A, why don't you go to a tailor? Yeah. Yeah. Also, I, then you can't. Re, I'm can't just blank shit, staring you? at you. I have. I don't have a tailor. That's crazy. To, to admit. No, not to admit. I mean, we appreciate the. Honesty. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's crazy that as a fashion <laughs> professional of like the highest degree, a yeah. fashion director, you don't have a fucking no. seamstress even. No. Are you nice with it? Did you learn the shit at CSM Central Saint Martin for the people at no, home? No, I went there for fashion journalism. I could never. No, I. Yeah, I don't have a seamstress. Do you anything. have homies I could fucking hem your shit? Or yes. No? Yes, okay. I do. Actually, yeah, okay. I, I bring it to friends. Okay. Yeah. All right. See, it's good to have friends. Yeah. yeah. No, everyone from my year. So I was, I did the MA 
um, in fashion journalism, but everyone in my year is doing amazing. Like Charlotte Knowles was in my year. So it's all, it's very exciting to see. But I wouldn't bring my Rick pants to her. Do you ever get Rick to alter your Rick? He's just a call away. He probably would if I asked him. Yeah? Yeah. He's so he, fa- I mean, can he do, is he like nice? Obviously he's nice he's, with a needle? <laughs> even he, like he's clearly a conceptual genius and like probably, you know, can do amazing things with the pen or whatever, but can he literally yeah. take a needle and thread and do yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, Good from enough. what I know, he's still very hands on. I mean, a lot of creative process for the desi- for designers is now it starts with a merchandising team mm-hmm. right so the merchandising team will say we need uh, f- 50 trousers we need 30 this we need leather jackets we need more shoes but i know for rick owens it's still he starts with an idea and then it trickles down and then at some point at like 95 percent is done they're like okay we need three more sneakers mm. but a lot of brands um, merchandising team comes first now which is very sad but I mean, that's business. That's fashion for you. <laughs> that brand is business for you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Well, if, if we are dealing with this globalized flattening of the curve, mm-hmm. are there any fashion trends you would love to see guys le- lean into more, whether they are like super niche and esoteric, or maybe it's something that you spotted recently in the streets of New York or LA or Berlin? What's something that you would like that guys can just like take a cue from? Well, like I think it's also brain. the counterparts, assuming they're straights, is that the women don't judge them for it. Because mm. I feel like it's very easy to say, oh, I think everyone can do everything, but I wouldn't date a guy when <laughs> he's wearing a skirt, you know? So I think mm. it also goes both ways. I would like everyone... Wait, so don't dress for the girlies? Just for the fellas? No, I was just saying about women, they should also be open and accepting and practice oh. what they preach. Yeah. Stop <laughs> saying I wear terrible clothes. Yeah. <laughs> the number one tip then for guys is get an open-minded bitch. <laughs> yeah. get, an, get an open-minded bitch. Um, <laughs> My bitch open-minded. <laughs> um, Busting that mind wide open. <laughs> How kind of be unintellectual? My bitch is open-minded. Mm. Sorry, Central C reference. Yeah. Okay, so women should stop judging dudes for trying new shit. I'm still judging. You're judging? I'm, yeah, I'm judging myself. So you're not judging. taking your own advice, but hypothetically no. it would be No, nice. but I would like to be the person not judging. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess I was like, oh... It's not it's not cringe if you try to hard but try too hard but I'm obviously I'm myself I'm judging if a guy tries too hard I get it have yeah been some hypocrite really bad fits in your in your last three weeks have you seen some any particularly bad fits um no I would say for example if I go on a date and someone then intentionally comes in all wig or mm. wears their tubbies and I can tell it's a bit I mean it's also cute I guess but maybe that's a bit too intense it's like, so, yeah he's like limping in his tabbies <laughs> yeah yeah I said yeah I have no idea what pantering means like uh, they're doing it like to suck up to you because they know it's yeah. you who they're seeing on the date exactly I mean yeah Wait, so does it work though no okay. I don't think so wait so what does a guy need to show up on a date wearing then just like a fucking like suit <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking Michael Kors, Full you know? Suit. Michael Kors. I mean, Celine era Michael. I don't think no, they did Wentz, actually. Contemporary shit. <laughs> contemporary shit. Um, I mean, if you can afford it, I think the nicest brand where you can't go wrong is Prada mm. in terms of menswear. Sure. Still a pretty high bar. Yeah, yeah that, I said if you can afford it. Oh, I meant just, for, oh, but also just like taste level, too. Oh, all that really? like nylon shit is not like that, you know, crazy conceptual at all. No, so I think it's like the one the thing. Front. That you can wear without thinking too much and it will look good. What's been the, so we have a whole section on it called Badass, but uh, what's been the worst fit a guy's ever pulled up on a date to wearing? I think it's more just moves. Like, I don't like when someone doesn't take off their sunglasses ever. <laughs> oh, that's a crazy move on a date. Was this no, person blind no, though? Like, no, fully like going somewhere. A date doesn't have to be, it can also be like a link. You know, you're at an event, you say like the p- person mm. with the sunglasses on that to Was me. Was he trying to be like the fucking rock star of the place? Not like, he, like several hundred people. Like, oh, I, like anyone. Oh, oh yeah. It's a, it's anyone. a pandemic. It's yeah. a pandemic. I think just, who do you it's think? It's a you pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, not taking your sunglasses off. I think it's just, unless you're. What about if you're outside? Okay, but the entire, I don't know. I think some people now just like, it's the whole day, the sunglasses on. Mm. I don't, I what don't know. What if you, I'm one of those guys, I, really? I hide as much of my face as possible. Yeah, it's intentional. No, you're not an indoor sunglasses guy. But I no, that's a I lot. I think we both wish yeah. we were, but yeah. we're not cool enough. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't either. I, mean, I would think like, is everyone looking at me? Do they think I'm not taking my sunglasses off because I think I'm too cool? <laughs> like I could, no. Um, so yeah, sunglasses on, but that's not a bad fit. Um, what's something bad? I mean, same, like logos everywhere, mm. I guess. And then I'm not the huge tailoring expert, when, but like an ill-fitting suit. Mm, you know, when you can just, you know, like oh, yeah, too tight on the arms. Like, yeah. Oh, 
gross. I hate that too. I'm <laughs> me, very with European. no seam stress. Pulls up to a date with me wearing a too tight suit. See you fucking yeah. later, bozo. See you very, later. Very European. Um, yeah, if they don't cut off their rig pants with kitchen scissors. <laughs> yeah. So these are kind of trends that guys need to stop doing. Is like, yo, stop going too tight with the suit. Stop. Get the logos off. Yeah. Take your sunglasses off. Yeah, I mean, I can name bad things, but I don't know anyone who wears. McQueen sneakers, Ugh. you know, like oh, I like those what's fat that? boys, yeah, those like big thick Stan Smith looking ass. Yeah. Stan Smith I mean, with the PBLs, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like bad is obviously. I mean, so many things, but it's um, like to each their own, I guess. But what's really taken over still like this British style of the like Love Island Ugh. cast. The I Jack mean, that it, it seems to not go away. The tight pants and the everything yeah. seems to about to be well, popping also open. shaped like fucking like yeah. triangles shaped on on top of other triangles, yeah. like. Their bodies are kind of ill I just found out that everyone's on steroids. <laughs> really? I didn't know. Not us. Like, <laughs> no, not, I'm not on Ozempic either. You mean like fucking UK boys? But all everyone like everyone ever hormone? who's ripped, I feel like. Is, what, about, what about Rick Owens? He's not on steroids or... No, I don't think he is. Okay. But he also works out an hour a day. Yeah. He's 60 and looks like this. He looks awesome. incredible. It's insane. He's a beast. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right. So we are fresh off the Met Gala you were at a press preview of the actual exhibition last yes. night, but first off, speaking of fucking terrible fucking fits, holy the clown shit. show! Do you want to hear my list? Of course. Okay, but I didn't write Is so best many dress, negative. Worst dress? What are you doing? Things. Okay. Oh, just trust me. Let's run through it. Let's no, no, just trust me. Okay. First thing is, did you see Vaquera's AI pictures? No. no. Okay, Vaquera uploaded like five images on their Instagram. Hashtag. How many butt cheeks were out? Thank you, Anna Winter, for your gracious invite. They were not there. It's just <laughs> AI pictures of just like a dress, like a muddy dress. It's amazing. You have to look That's it up later. Rock. That's yeah. like, that feels very Vaquera from the little that I know as a straight man. Super fun. Did yeah. they have any, uh, I heart your whole sweaters or like no, top, but pretty tops of butts <laughs> out? <laughs> pretty intense dresses. And I think it's the, oh, like they made use of AI and I think they did it brilliantly because it would make sense that they're invited. You know, they're in New York. They're, so I they're think to just... Like, yeah, they're a bit too like downtown, too like I, I don't know. If yeah, really for Anna Vogue's Winter, na- Vogue's radar. Exactly, yeah, but I th- their nose literally in this. I thought the move about. was amazing because yeah. it's like very tongue in cheek. Fuck you. Okay, then I wrote down, Alta Mason was the first black male model on a Chanel runway after 100 years, so he can do whatever he wants. Mm. He was basically Facts. wearing what like a bridal gown. For I don't care, man. but yeah. it, he can do whatever he wants. Sure. Okay. And um, then I wrote down, I would like to see less leather glove references from the guys and more chrome hearts because mm, Karl Lagerfeld sure. was like have you ever seen the documentaries about him he had like pots, Crazy chrome. Yeah. pots of chrome and would just dip his hands I in I love that oh my and, god I mean, just what a, a kettle of chrome what the belt buckle is so iconic right like, like that. iconic yeah. it's like Jack Nicholson um, departed with coke but he's just want some chrome <laughs> 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 but I did see a few people with uh, chrome hearts and I think uh, Will Welch know. from GQ had a whole like custom chrome hearts thing on yes and Sam Hine wrote about uh, Carl's Chrome obsession. Yeah, exactly. So that was amazing. But Will was in custom YSL and Chrome. Yeah, and it and he good. bleached his hair. Did he? You that was. That? I just thought, like, I thought like super dusty oh, blonde. For I hadn't. I thought so maybe it was dry shampoo because at the end, <laughs> Cal, no, no, Karl Lagerfeld's full head was dry shampoo at some oh, point. Oh, I didn't even think like that. It, I this was like you. It, it wouldn't move. Oh, what an homage. I thought <laughs> Will Walters was trying to look like cool. <laughs> oh. Like, how do you do? Fun? I mean, shout out Will, but okay, that's cool. That's cool. No, I think it was oh, like Karl Lagerfeld drag. S- I think so. Well, and he went to Ricky's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rihanna Stylus is called Jaleel Weaver, and he's doing amazing. Yeah. I love the dress. I think um, what was weird is the camellia, the flower. Mm-hmm. It, that was Coco Chanel's fa- favorite flower. It didn't really have anything to do with Carl's history, so mm. I don't know why everyone A referenced this. A lot of people kind of missed the mark when paying homage. Or but yeah, she looked amazing, you. and I think the one fashion rule is if you feel amazing, you can like it translates. So Absolutely. you can't again can't really hate Look on good, anyone. Like play good, feel good. She yeah, and she yet. was like she arrived three hours off. late, like it was just epic. She's always late, right? I think so. Rocky's um, too busy fucking mobbing out <laughs> outside the Carlisle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kim Kardashian, I was pretty disappointed. I love Scaparelli. I mm-hmm. think what Daniel does there is amazing. Which one skims weird, underneath? I, okay, I'm, I'll get to that. Don't fuck up with my notes. Oh. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> weird, that out. the weird thing, no, I just, I'm trying to get my words out here. I'm very ang- The list is long. Oh my God, All right, just cook. Just let it cook. Let it cook. Okay, um, I didn't know if it was a skims thing. Uh, first of all, Scapar- Elsa Scaparelli and Coco Chanel hated each other. Yeah, there's a big rivalry. Yeah. Enemies, so weird flex, no? Like, But is that just her... Maybe being a little ignorant. I don't know. Yeah, but no, these things are planned out. It doesn't. So that didn't really make sense to me. Then, have you seen Kim Kardashian in real life? She's tiny. She's this tall. Yeah, she's so, like five foot tall. And beautiful. Like she's so nice, super kind. 
everyone I know in fashion that works with her always has amazing things. So, but she's this tall. So to break up her body with the pearls on top and then the Eva Evo skims or something else just makes no sense. Like it was giving too. centaur. Yeah. And like, I mean, I get the reference from her. You're doing amazing, sweetie, yeah. with the pearls. I think that's like, if that was intentional, I, I think that's super funny. the self-referential funny. humor there was kind of Super elite, funny. Right? But it, if, you're, if you're a bit shorter, to it doesn't elongate your body, right? To like break it up. with mm. a So that to me just doesn't really yeah. make any sense. That's and taking, oh, that she was sending this to Kendall Jenner, who was wearing, who was eight and a half feet tall last night. Yeah. I didn't write anything yeah, down for that. <laughs> um... Okay, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Shai Gilgis Alexander? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shay. Shay. Looked fucking amazing. So in confident. Didn't take his sunglasses off. Mm. I'm noticing that in hindsight. Yeah. But in Tom Brown. And I think as a collective, the people in Tom Brown look the best. Really? Are they the new, or they, is Tom Brown the new king of the red carpet when it comes to things like this? I mean, he is, are they married? He's uh, the partner of Andrew, Andrew Bolton, Bolton. Mm-hmm. who's the curator of the Met. So all, I mean, I would assume he knows the theme. Nepo baby. Nepo baby. I mean, the most iconic fashion couple ever. Right. So he, I would assume he also knows the theme in advance and can prepare. But I thought everyone in Tom Brown, like Tiana Taylor mm-hmm. looked amazing. Bella Ramsey, even Olivia Rodrigo looked quite mm-hmm. good. So I think overall they were the best dressed group. The one thing I will say is that at this point now, it's almost like a go-to cheat code for a athlete or a rapper to just wear Tom Brown. So I wonder at what point will there be diminishing returns for the men who wear Tom to things like this? It's a cheat code. Yeah. It, I mean, Pusha does it. Shay did it. I Whatever. didn't love his outfit. Russell Pusha's Westbrook outfit, has actually. done it before. I mean, this is, this is almost the, again, it's the go-to cheat code where like fashion people such as yourself. Won't say shit to you. Are gonna, no, not even won't say shit. You'd be like, oh, damn, took the risk. Little ass suit. Oh, no. <laughs> Whatever. No, <laughs> no risk taking at all. I get it. Yeah. But it, they don't, I think they all looked amazing. Uh, Cardi B looked amazing, I thought. Cheng Peng, uh, Chinese designer. Um, Raul Lopez and Paloma in Loire. Mm-hmm. I think that was like New York royalty. In New York. She was styled by Carlos Nazario and he was styled by Kai Lu, who does who styles Kylie normally, Kylie okay. Jenner. I think they looked fantastic. Shut up, I, I like elite IG follow. Really? Yeah. I mean I, I hope Watch he story, it's great. Mm-hmm. Oh, so amazing. I think they looked good. They were you it's also nice to see friends on the red carpet because sometimes it's just the designer paired with whoever Anna Winter yeah. thinks you should go to the thing. Oh too. shit, that's how it works. It's mm-hmm. she does the matchmaking there. Yeah. I mean, if a brand buys a table for example, Balenciaga had a table yesterday. They get to decide who's going. Mm-hmm. But they, I mean, Anna still will approve who right. they're bringing. Did anyone and wear Balenci? Yeah. Anyone know? Yeah, Vittoria, the model. Vittoria, she's a supermodel. Okay. And she looked amazing. Okay. I mean, she looked really good. But I know they had a table. And Kendall was not there, correct? I don't, or he snuck it. Like, I don't know. Right, yeah. I, I know Maria Tiefenthaler, Who's I think, was there. dressed as a cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I saw the cockroach. Uh, but Anna Winter will then, if you're a big brand, still assign maybe one young designer with a plus one to your table. Got it. Mm. Because she's still, you know, she's trying. Okay. So my friend Elena Velez came yesterday, and she bought a, like, um, artist, and she's plus size, which I also thought it was amazing since Carl's comments <laughs> oh yes he is uh, the most fat phobic <laughs> motherfucker of all time for sure but he also went back and forth on his, his opinions like you n- were never sure if something was a bit I think I'm, yeah. not, I'm not apologizing anything here but just he didn't really Dry stand sense of humor. by his Quote machine, though. or nothing I don't maybe no thoughts at all but he you know <laughs> just vibes um, okay next thing Everyone in Fendi looked bad, but that's not surprising. <laughs> Everyone in Fendi looked bad, but everything at Fendi looks bad, I think, at this point. But Correct. they were also meant major sponsors. So it was okay. Chanel was the main sponsor and then uh, Fendi. Uh, Alexa Chung, mm. she wore, I'm not, I don't want to say because I don't know how to pronounce this, but an independent designer looked fabulous. What, can, you, can you try to say the brand or spell it out? Ryzen, Ryzen Pierce. Okay, one of those, I don't know. No, no idea. Uh, what AI are you saying it correctly? <laughs> yeah. I love the Doja Cat vape moment and the Doja oh, yeah, Cat yeah. Um, Emma Is Chamberlain. Meowing? Amazing. Do you think she studied, like she learned how to, her meow was amazing. <laughs> I mean, Very she, convincing. She made a, she no, made a name no for herself there. impersonating, doing the cow song. Yeah. Like I think she's just good oh, at doing f- animals. Bitch, I'm a cow. Right. I think some people, Ooh. like, you know, when a good jokes writes themselves and some people are meant to be on the stage and she just, whatever she does, like her vaping and just... I think yeah. it was amazing. Yeah, she's come a long way from showing feet in racist chat rooms for sure. Exactly. <laughs> uh, supermodel Liu Wen and Tori Burch looked amazing, like a black and white dress with 
like flowers at the bottom. I spice, I thought amazing presence on the carpet for, for this being her first time. But the dress, I, th I think it was very last minute, Belma, but super ill fitting at the sleeves. Okay. okay. Like it just, what I don't do you know. think of the camera accessory? She was like, it was a bit like she yeah. was performing, like she was never from whichever angle the camera came, she was posing. So mm. I think, I don't know. Do you know. think she'll be the next fashion it girl? Is she, she already? already? I think she already is. Yeah. Right? I, Last I mean, paper magazine cover. RIP. That's true. Oh my God. Yeah. RIP. I mean, everyone's firing <laughs> this stuff right now. You're here for the death of American lifestyle media, by the way. Yeah. I mean, anywhere. Maybe anywhere. it's your fault, oh, dude. Damn. Oh, the influencer. The merchant merchant of death. Death. <laughs> the influencer taking Burn it down. over the jobs. <laughs> I mean, if you are in media, this is what people have been preaching for years, right? Like someone with a platform will always bring, like, it, that's yeah. just how it works now. And start if, a podcast. Start yeah. a podcast. I mean, that I think that's just the reality of it all. Mm -hmm. And I think there's still jobs out there. And I just, how I did a whole speech to CSM students last month and they still have the, oh, I want to work at ID, who Vice is firing, like Vice is letting yeah. go of any international thing. And, oh, I still want to work at Dazed. I, I love those publications, it's no shade, but Dazed is, I think, in a Soho house, like pretty rent-free in London. So why are you, can you not follow the money? Like go somewhere, why don't you pitch to Jacques Mousse to do his own magazine, like sure. a acne paper? Yeah. Sorry, two more things on my thing. Let's okay. go. <laughs> Iman <laughs> Haman looked beautiful. Uh, Bad Bunny and Jacques Mousse, I think. Bad Bunny. Uh, Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. I think that was kind of funny, actually. The open like, back. Jacques Mousse looked so good. I mean, that was very close to what Peter did before, but mm. I think Ooh. that was a moment. <laughs> Tyler Mitchell, he's a photographer, yes. right? Yeah. He also looked amazing. And he then. Bodhi. That was Bodhi? Yes. Okay, I think. Okay, I think it was They're a super close. cute. Him and super Emma. cute outfit. Uh, and then I had down Derek Blasberg, most awkward interviewer ever. <laughs> well, what about the woman that fucked it's up Selma McCartney with Aubrey Plaza? <laughs> I tried to watch this 15 times because everyone sent rough. it to me. I cannot. I was, I'm like, as a kid, I had to leave a room, like Adam Sandler movie. I had oh, to, yeah. I can't, I physically, uh, I, <laughs> no, I can't. So I, you just have I watched PTSD? it, <laughs> I watched it on mute. And Oof. even then it's very awkward. Aubrey with a little, little Uzi shoulder shimmy. People at these events are very tense. Some people sure. are on drugs to make them calm or make them even yeah, more social. Yeah, this motherfucker, like this interviewer, it's like, yo, put the mic in front of Stella McCartney's face. Right. Like she was just hot. You know, it's. Don't go to day job, people. Yeah. I will say yeah. the best tweet that I saw all night was just simply, Derek Blasberg, you will never be famous. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, he was also, he was, a, I've never met him, but he's giving, like, bad vibes, I think. I, is he still at YouTube? I don't, I have I, no I, I don't, idea, I don't think dude. so. Okay. He, I think he does, like, the copywriting for Carly Kloss's cookies or some yeah. shit like that. He just invented cloud chasing. Yeah. You, know, you almost kind of got to give it to him. Yeah. No, he's everywhere. I he's wish I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well. Can we ask you about just some real quick, just yeah. uh, rapid off fire. the top rapid yes. fire thoughts okay. on um, some outfits of like some guys that you didn't mention. Yes. Uh, Lil Nas X. Cheeks out. Yeah. Okay. Hanging moon. <laughs> <laughs> what? <Well>, I've. <laughs> It was Dior also. That what? was so random. I thought he was a Versace guy. I thought he was just spray painted. Well, spray paint spray paint is done by Pat McGrath's team. Okay. Oh, who right. sure. I love Pat, mother. Queen. Um, I heard it was a like chaos day and they still did his um, legs in the sprinter. And that's why there's a part of the skin showing, which... Oh, like right above, right above... His bathroom selfie. And that, like, okay, but that's... He's past the red carpet oh, at that okay. point. So that's, you know, what people are changing also in the Met once they are up oh, the right, stairs. Oh, totally. You don't say, you're not um, telling me Jared Leto didn't wear that shit all night? He, he did not. He was wearing... No. no, he was wearing... What do you think of that? What do you think of Jared Leto's costume? No thoughts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. No, he... I mean, he himself, I, whenever I see him at fashion event, he just gives weird vibes. Like this... Ugh. Like... I don't know. He's a no thoughts, all vibes guy for sure. There is I've absolutely nothing rattling around in that beautiful, pretty head of his. I got beef with him. He stole my seat at Jeremy, um, fuck, blank on the name, Scott. Uh, Jeremy Scott show <gasps> oh, 10 years ago. So fucking beef. It's on fuck stage. Fuck that. Yeah. Rude. Jer Jeremy Strong. Can you show me a picture? He I don't know. I don't leave my house he was, he was also. Like, <laughs> he was looking like a Willy Wonka he had fucking the Homer driving necklace. a train. He's from Succession. Oh, him. Kevin yeah. Roy. Um, he was dressed so bad that it kind of looked amazing. <laughs> really? Yeah. I so liked, bad it was good? Yeah, but also everyone's in fucking black and white. I like the color scheme that was going on. Like the Santa Fe Willy Wonka? Yeah. You okay. had a little mint chocolate chip thing. Yeah. Was that his wife who was with yes. him? I don't know. I thought they looked yeah. amazing. Okay. They How looked like rich because there's always a celebrity and then the rich donors who mm -hmm. actually like have a table there. They looked like that crowd, which is what you want to be a part of. 
Just like eccentric weirdo yeah. Richies. Yeah. Richie Riches. Yeah. Okay. So shout out, right. shout out to the Strongs. Yeah. Um, what about Pedro Pascal in Valentino? With the shorts. With the little, like biker shorts. Yeah. They were so tight. Everyone loved it online, no? I have no... I'm no? Okay. Everyone loved it just because it's Everyone that I follow, which is 333 people, they loved it. Mm. So I... No I feel bad shitting on him because uh, I like his stylist, Julie. Oh, uh, right. Mm-hmm. She's great. Mm-hmm. Um... Pedro Pascal, as they try to get weirder and weirder and weirder, the plot. Oh, it has to come with conviction lost. if you if you really yeah. okay. Okay. Speaking mm-hmm. of uh, going weird, Pete Davidson. I don't know the obsession. I don't get it. Really, I thought you were like, didn't you? Were you no, but his like, oh. fashion. Oh. I don't. I. Well, I don't like, get it. He's kind of like anti-fashion, right? He doesn't. Anti-fashion, give a fuck. and then. Yeah, but I mean, but everyone. He, he was doing the gloves with the pinky rings on the gloves yeah. and the fucking bucket yeah. and the sunglasses. I mean, on. he must be. I feel Trench. like even Anna Winter must be infatuated that he's invited. Mm. It's a big, he's a big name because I, mean, I think he was Yorkers, a vote guest like and not and not part of a table that was. But I, I think don't know. I, don't I think know the seating, the seating um, arrangements. I don't know. Okay, one uh, yeah. more for you. Mm-hmm. ASAP Rocky in the final kilted look with the leather tie. Him going full lo- uh, Lagerfeld collar. Three belts. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Four Gucci belts. Four? F- yeah, I think yes. f- four Gucci belts are amazing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I think just watching one him hype. Yes. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I think just him hyping up Rihanna and the way he looked at her. Yeah. Just, I mean, that's so cute. Did you like him smushing that poor girl's face hopping through yeah. the crowd? But After w- in the dome. But there was room to go around the barrier, so I don't know. Yeah, it felt deliberate. <laughs> yeah, he needed a little, a little, little viral moment. I love it. What about, okay, so you were at mm-hmm. the... You're at the presentation with all the press. Yes. You kind of got like a little inside view. Well, you yes. were, uh, to use this American expression I had to explain to you, which is very awkward. You were like a pig in shit. Yes. Um, F- fully. What was the juiciest bit of gossip you overheard on Met Monday, the first I Monday mean, in May? Okay, so every Met Gala night at 9 a.m. it starts the press preview. And I think like 200 journalists are invited. And this is press only, no influencers. So I'm there as a also oh, fashion wow. editor, not as Brenda hashtag. And... <laughs> And inside you are there two oh wolves. <laughs> were, there any, were there any influencers <laughs> trying to fucking weasel their way in? I think there's no chance because okay. this has nothing to do with Vogue. This is on, like I'm invited through the Met Got Museum. Mm-hmm. So this is where like Max Holland, the director of the Met, speaks. It's very, very it's exclusive. Quite serious. I did hear that every year, but this is my first time going. Okay. I did hear that every year journalists try to stay in the bathroom and stay until the night like stowaways yes wow, what dude, yes fucking yes savage i didn't try because there was no <laughs> snacks there and i didn't have breakfast so i would have not made it <laughs> i'm the vegan like i have to eat every three hours yeah. like otherwise i'm not well, but fashion people normally I don't heard eat, so they could probably tough it out yeah wait they literally they have actually to, like, don't that's true they have to comb the bathrooms and like do security checks yeah. to make sure that fucking i mean that's a journalist's job right so what a dream if you can like stay there to um, and it's not get, very get easy to get case. invited to the Met Gala because it's uh, it's Condé Nast. Like you know, I'm I would never go as O thirty to see. Like I right. wouldn't, you, you know, like hashtag. that's their yeah. thing. And fair enough, she's you know, it's only running because of Anna Winter. But I heard that people like hide, try to hide in that's the bathrooms. That is fun. And awesome. the entire Met, I mean, there's security everywhere, and I felt like it was more than usual. But you could sneak off. the The museum was closed during that day, so oh, so you could like hide out in a sarcophagus. Yeah, and I pop think up so. Like a fucking like the Undertaker. <laughs> I mean, don't get any ideas, but no, I mean, I don't know. I didn't try. But were, there I, any, that's were there any journalists that are very clearly in like fucking red carpet, like their most chic, elegant thing that's like, okay, this no. bitch is trying to stow away. Journalists already, I think people are so, you know, when people want to prove so hard, like I'm working. Right. I'm working. I don't have time for this. I mean, it was giving that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm working. Really? Was um, it, so was it like bitchy vibes? No, like- not at all. I mean, to me, it's like that was my Met, Met Gala. It's like so exciting seeing all the writers that you look up yeah. to. And it's very... It, to me, that is the cool kids club because it's mm. something you can't buy. The brainiacs. Fully. The, because the eggheads. <laughs> Met Gala, you can buy it. Right. Like, it's 50K, but you can buy it. Mm. That's what I heard. And I think the tables, they used to be 300, so maybe now inflation, they're even more. Woo. It's a bulk price. Maybe there's like 12 seats in the yeah. table. I don't know. And which we're saving American economy. Fully. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, this has time. more media impact value than the Super Bowl. Wow. Damn. So when people say like, oh, the Met Gala is the girl Super Bowl, it has more. Yeah. So, um, and Rihanna's at both. Yeah. Yeah, Rihanna's at both. Does I it think cheapen it at all that it is just this fucking hoopla celebrity circus and not necessarily like, it, that is, I mean, the most commercialized, mm-hmm. uh, exploitable theme there is? Yeah, fully. But 
the Costume Institute of the Met. So there's different departments. So the yep. Costume Institute is the fashion department and they are self-funded. So, so they need this. They need operate. this. This is and this is I think their only source of income. I think last year was like 17 million or 19 mil I'm making shit up mm. that they raised with this. So this is their money that they then allocate for paying their staff. I mean this is they're self-funded which also means people don't see fashion as art in this regard and this is archiving things and like important pieces of hist fashion history. So I think there's a reason for it and if getting celebrities there and it becoming more commercial is the only way to get press and then to get that that's the way it goes okay. i guess that's a, honestly you just did a great sell now yeah. i'm like all right I'm all right board. 50k uh, <laughs> no, honestly now james and i were gonna go yeah. Normally we're like no we turned it down i mean monday the night out of here come rage on. is a play rage is game seven <laughs> i mean i do think it's a tax write-off right so the oh, 50k sure. uh, yeah. And when you're it's rich enough, everything expensive. is. That's honestly yeah. what it comes down to. Everything is. But I think there's brands like Jeremy Scott with Moschino. I mean, that's his last. that was his last season. But I think there's brands that spend more money on the Met Gala than on their show. Sure. Because you get the... If you look at... Burberry was a big one last year, right? Like they brought so many people. Mm -hmm. Like the Nicki Minaj and the... Um, so if you think about maybe the table is 300K getting the celebrities and sure. making their custom things like this is millions the sometimes going up. and you have to fly them in they all fly private they need security they need so i don't know of course it's also it's a huge honor for them to go i'm i'm not saying they're paying for everything but it's very important for these brands it's its own cottage industry so yeah and you know what i just read this morning lvmh's annual revenue is more than the entire art market annual entire revenue art market yeah Jesus. I saw that tweet. That's crazy. Crazy. That is, well, I mean, who's who's buying the art? The Arnos to begin with? Like, yeah, is fair. this like, motherfucker <laughs> buying Remova? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly, dude. Fair. Was there was there a writer or journalist that you like kind of nerded out or like were a little starstruck over? Like, who's Ooh. your Rihanna? Oh, everyone. I mean, Rachel that you had on the pod. Rachel that's Tashin. now it's, yeah, Lloyd. Er. Er. What's Lloyd Wise? Rachel Tashin Wise. There it is. There I'm glad is. you did that for me. I That's why I just said Rachel. R RT Dubs. Yeah. Um, she is at Washington Post since last week. Mm -hmm. And she wrote a very critical piece on Karl Lagerfeld and celebrating him. And it was... I mean, was it was a cool talk moment. Of the day? Talk of the day. I mean, every it went on and went live at six a.m. and nine a.m. was the press preview. But, but, but were there any new revelations? That I didn't read it. But were there any new revelations in, it or was this kind of rehashing all the problematic and like controversial things yeah. he said and or his, his like family were Nazis. And his family's Nazi past and yeah. Uh, I think we have like no. I don't think new that. points, but people I mean, forget. people don't. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people do forget in fashion. <laughs> so, do, forget. <laughs> do you have a as a fellow German? Do you have a favorite Karl quote or a little story about him? Factoid. I mean, toyed. He is a fucking quote machine. Yeah. No, I think no favorite quotes. I mean, I like the okay. sweatpants one with uh, the like people uh, in sweatpants have lost. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much have lost control in their lives. Sweatpants are a sign of defeat. You yeah. lost control of your life, so you bought some sweatpants. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just like Don't tell problems. Don't Bars. <laughs> That's a bar, though. A yeah. bar. Well, they're yeah. all bars. Yeah. You know why? He was hopped up on 10 Diet Cokes a day, dude. Yeah. He was the fourth Fully, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and this whole joke of like, oh, Carl would he have was, loved Ozempic. Like, this whole uh -huh. thing. I, I mean, iconic. But yeah, I love that. I was geeking out about her. Um, Shout out Rachel, friend of the show. Yeah, and this. having no, the right. balls to write this the morning of the Met, and then she still showed up to the preview. Oh, so, yeah, I yeah. mean, that's... Well, you, you know, know why? Her boss is Jeff Bezos. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. <laughs> yeah. She can do whatever she <laughs> She's wants. She's got access to the space lasers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't work out here, she can just go to the fucking moon, dude. <laughs> no, but I was... I mean, I was very impressed by everyone. I'm the new kid on the block a little bit, you know? I'm, I'm only writing again since, like, seven months. Mm. So, yeah, yeah that was... Brennan's business is looking a little late. Yeah. But... So far, all slaps. What's like the European perception of the Met Gala from over yonder? You guys look at it like, are you are you guys fully tapped in? Yeah. Is it an American? Does it feel like this American no, thing? No, fully. I mean, yes, because we wish we could ha be this commercial okay. in the end. Like, we don't have this uh, big event. Have integrity and, and taste. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, all, no, but all the European brands are eating it up. I mean, they're all sure. spending so much money right. there. Louis Vuitton sending people. I mean, everyone's there. Yeah. So I think... We don't have something equivalent, but it, that's also America, right? Like go big yeah, or go Bergheim. home. Yeah. yeah, we have Bergheim. I guess the Met Gala exactly. at this point now is this international event, right? Yeah, it and just so happens to be in New York. Most of the Earth. big brands are, I would say, all European mm -hmm. that are buying that's true. tables there. Yeah, no at this point. fog. <laughs> Wait, what were the American? There's no Ralph presence, right? 
Or was there? I didn't. I mean, I saw Bodie. Just Bodie. Oh, Gen- honestly, yo, Jennifer Lopez was in Ralph Lauren, I think. Oh, of course she is. And yeah. Ben Affleck wasn't there because it was a Celtics playoff game. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I think so. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, Brenda, if you were mm-hmm. named chairman of the Met Gala next Ooh. year, what theme would you pick? Um, I'm waiting with bated breath. Yeah, should we do Berghain all, Core? All, 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 all black everything? All black everything? No, that's Berghain? Um, Berghain Core. Everyone just jizzing on the red carpet? <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> that is what bus, happens. The bus gala. Yeah. The nut gala. The white carpet. <laughs> um, no, I don't think I should be in charge of that. I'm not a fashion historian. Really? What's the first thing you would change, though, like overall, if you could just tweak yeah. one thing? Tweak one thing about the Met Gala? Yeah, change the rule. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm... Ban Derek Blacksburg. <laughs> Fully. No, no make, bless, us, make us hosts. Bless the guy. Well, I asked you guys before, like we were yeah. talking about business move next for you. And I was asking if you want to do like panel talks, like discussions yeah, with we'll the brand. MC but you said... Yeah, we'll Gala. do anything. Yeah. Would you? No. The bag's big sure. enough. You wouldn't? I wouldn't wear Burberry. I don't... I mean... <laughs> like if, you, if, if, if your brand makes Skepta look like shit... I don't know what's going on. Yeah. That's like my guy. Oh he my God. They look so, so bad. bad. I know. And Stormzy, what is, so is, is and Stormzy is like one of the most beautiful men to yes. walk this earth. So is they Skep. look bad. So yeah, true. Smoke. So let yeah. me ask you this. Is Daniel Lee the most ultimate fucking failed upwards fake until you make it and it was all fucking blazy? Smoke mirrors? Mm, no, I don't think. I mean, his time at Bottega. Do you know my Bottega scandal? No. No, tell us. Oh my no, God. No. I'm kicked out of So House for that. What, what? happened? What? You didn't do your research. No, no, it's on my Wikipedia. Your, who are you again? <laughs> I read your last five <laughs> tweets. <laughs> yeah, right. Fair, fair. Follow you what we hit in, follow on Instagram. Yeah. Oh, I actually shouldn't even tell this because it still comes up on my Google, like when you Google me. Wait, um, what? Okay. In 2021, 2020, are you Googling Brenda hashtag Bottega Scandal? Oh, right you can. that we okay. got to include in the show notes the Bottega <laughs> Scandal to end all scandals. Yes. Um, so this is either two years ago or one year ago. It was full lockdown in Berlin. Yeah. Right in Berlin, we're all about going out. So the whole city, like, we're, like, we're struggling. And um, it was like 9 p.m. curfew. No one was allowed really to go on walks with, like, only with your, the people that you live with. <laughs> full lockdown. And Sounds Bottega <laughs> flew to Berlin. Daniel Lee Bottega, they flew to Berlin to shoot their show in Berghain. And we've heard rumors, like, for two weeks of, like, People are overworked. No one's really getting paid of this production sh- being okay, shot yeah, yeah, in Berghain. Yeah. So it was already like bad vibes. Like, why are you flying in to like not make anyone money? You yeah. know, when you come to another city as a brand, like that's where yeah. you should support right, local talent. Local so talent. I'm just hearing like everyone's overworked. Like no one's wearing masks, like the whole nine. Pretty bad. And then it doesn't sound so bad in hindsight, but this is lockdown. Like yeah, we're in a, so we're all hearing this rumors. Like if you work in fashion in Berlin about like they're shooting something there, everyone's flying in, they got the whole soul house rented out. And, um, at some point the f- shoot finishes, the production finishes. And then the next morning we all see videos emerging, like WhatsApp group chats of a huge party they threw in oh, soul house, super spreader. but fully like, this was like an era of like, no one was outside. And I started posting about it because I was really ang- just, it was like, just awful. A little jealous. Little yeah, a little jealous. super. Where's my invite? <laughs> Where's yeah. my invite? Yeah, exactly. Um, I got to do ketamine at home like a loser. <laughs> like a loser. <laughs> I <laughs> Is that, isn't doing ketamine anywhere being a loser? In our opinion, yeah. Okay. Depends who you ask. Mm, yeah, so I started posting about <laughs> it. ketamine was Jared Leto doing in his fucking show pet outfit? <laughs> Um, okay, I so started you know posting jelly? about it, yeah. and then it took off, and it was in the national news, and <sighs> like it was everywhere. And well, I think you're trying to cancel them because of your um, well, because of it. there's also a few other people like that your spoke out. Fucking Der Spiegel or whatever. I did not have Twitter at this time, but okay. yes, um, I have Twitter since like three months. I think it will See? be my downfall. Yeah, that's, why that's why my research is so shallow. <laughs> you, uh, but the only person she follows is Cher. <laughs> no, I followed people for a like, few weeks, but it was. T- are you on Twitter? Of course, I followed I, you. Okay, well, I and don't. When I got no follow back, I said, "What is going what on? What is here? going on?" No, I fully got sucked into Twitter, like open, like reading the timelines, reading everyone's opinions, mm. reading. Um, I got addicted. I, <laughs> a little, little well, late and there. It's a yeah, really toxic <laughs> cycle. Party. <laughs> this Twitter thing, it rocks. Yeah, like why does everyone? Yeah, Elon's like, a genius. Because <laughs> I started, and after we, uh, a week, I had like a thousand followers. I was like, "Oh, this is amazing! Yeah, Twitter is sure. so fun!" And everyone's like, "Wait, you wait!" And then I saw like my mentions, and they were so negative, and then I just. Mm. Followed mm. share. So, the so, bo- I don't so your Bottega Anyways, posting made yes. it to the national news, and then yes. what was the fallout? Uh, well, 
I got kicked out of Soul House immediately for wow. speaking badly about them, which like fuck they them. revoked your membership. Yeah, probably a blessing in disguise. Although the Berlin Soul House is different yeah, than it's the fucking fire. No. Oh no. Berlin, you don't have to go to Soul House to hang out or have aren't friends. The so- aren't the rooms in Soul House in Berlin kind of nice, yeah. like to stay in? You're not getting a good word from Soul House out of okay. me. Oh, that, and that's um, well, And by the way, in New York, it's fucking the trash. funniest yeah. bullshit it's of worse. all time. It's the worst. And if you, yeah, like yeah. in London, it's kind of unavoidable if mm-hmm. you want to have a social totally. life. Like you can't, you can't go. Well, that, they just have like private members club culture, right? Yeah, I guess so. Have you been to Bond Zero Bond here in New York? Uh, that's the newest thing. No, yes. not allowed. Oh, not allowed. Okay, keep going. Is that where? No, I'm just lying to sound cool on the podcast. Is that where Eric <laughs> Adams parties? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, yeah, so it becomes a whole scandal, and it was kind of ish part of the downfall of Daniel Lee at Bottega. Really? Not mm. me, but like it was. P- it's part of the story, right? And then at d- his Detroit show, a bunch him of shit j- just happened. Him being a fucking mess. Yeah. Just be a messy human. Huh. Yeah, being a messy human. Um, so he's a piece of shit? Question mark. I think dot, a lot dot, of dot, <laughs> dot, exclamation no. Point? I think a lot of people, you know. This is so dark, but for example, at LVMH, after John Galliano's scandal, scandals put this put lightly, and Alexander McQueen's death, I think they're trying a lot harder to control in a positive way their creative directors that they don't uh, go on coke benders or that they yeah. don't that they have hey, security don't call that Hitler. they yeah. uh, just just do us that <laughs> favor please. maybe don't exactly but I think at LVMH these things will not happen anymore at least I hope that right, the yeah. creative director is like driven crazy by the amount of work the mm. pressure the whatever you don't think Pharrell's gonna start fucking <laughs> quoting Mussolini or anything or? I don't think I mean yeah. I don't think he has to work that hard and at caring I think b- by that point that was still another story there but yeah it's it's a different yeah. group so I think Daniel Lee was is one of the reasons why maybe they are also and then Balenciaga obviously sure. um, oh, reworking how how the creative directors work, how much pressure is on them, yeah. how much are they allowed to say, how much they are allowed to go off the rails. You know, I think so that like, will all break their minds. Yeah. Mm, okay. I think also, so. Good I'm not thing. excusing. Wayne comes from money. He's good. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's good. <laughs> Actually, I went to Tokyo 7 yesterday, and half of the stuff is Alexander Wang in there. Well, I'm yeah, not people surprised to hear that. Getting rid of their shit, no. Yeah, I don't... But didn't people get rid of the shit then, like, a year ago or whenever? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and it's sitting there. It's been sitting there for a oh, year. Oh, it's yeah. been sitting there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fair. <laughs> well, okay, so you, hit, you had the hard-hitting journalism around <laughs> Bottega and Daniel Lee. Yeah. When so w- now you're the fashion director of O32C, one yes. of the biggest fucking most influential fashion magazines in the world. When yes. did you start? When did I start there? What do you start? Th- when did you start there? Um, as, okay. as fashion director. Can I backtrack a little of bit? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I did my master's in fashion journalism, and then as I was graduating, I realized I would. This was in London, so I really wanted to stay, and I realized I couldn't get a job at Vogue at any like anywhere. This is when Edward just just a point. I also wasn't good enough, okay. um, and I couldn't afford to stay in London as a freelance writer. So I gave up writing overall and started Disruptive, my archive, mm. and I worked on building my own platform for the next four years. And freelance writing at this point, is this is 100 pounds per article mostly. So you can't, I mean, you have to write 10 a day to make, make a living so pretty much. A wage, yeah, no, exactly. yeah. not at all. And I didn't enjoy it like to this extent. So I built up my platform until requests started getting back in. And this is about a year, a year and a half ago. And then I really wanted to work with one publication only and have a column so that I wouldn't have to pitch because pitching right. takes up a lot of writer's time. Yeah. You can also not be sure that your idea will get stolen, that they're like, thanks mm. for this. Oh, right. Right on. Great pitch. <laughs> yeah, we'll great call, pitch. We'll call, we'll call you. you. We'll call exactly. You, yeah. Oh, you do the thing and it's great prestige and then they don't pay you for another or ever. Net, um, net 360. <laughs> yeah. yeah, net like you're blocked. Um, <laughs> And uh, so I started working to a few publications. I can't really say who, but I was pitching just, can I have a column so that I have a secure thing? Mm -hmm. And in the end, like they all started like, oh, we love what you do. And so it's spoken. And then in the end, it was always like, yeah, but you can't say this. And this is an advertiser. And this, you can't say this. Mm, and all 32 c was always my dream, but I thought they didn't even know I existed, basically. And I was at a supreme openings party in Berlin, and Jörg Koch, the founder of the magazine, came up to me and was like, I love what you do. And I'm oh. like, shook, shook. Who? Didn't, who me? Brenda hashtag? Didn't say any, I was like bamboozled. <laughs> and on the way home, I asked my friend, like, should I text him? Should I email him? I really want to work with him. And then I didn't, because I was too scared. Mm. And then my best friend Raz got hired as the fashion director there. 
and Jörg actually this is I've never told anyone this he I mean, Jörg will not listen to this Great he <laughs> no no it's not that interesting but Jörg actually approached Raz like can you kind of ask Brenda if she wants to work with us <gasps> because he didn't want to ask me wow I know. He's a shy boy. my ego was like through the roof wow you got and then, courted yeah I got courted did he tell and him 032 CDs nuts <laughs> Fully. I mean, I want it to rewrite in, into O thirty two C B. Oh, thank you very much. That's. It's also O thirty two C is a Pantone. Pantone. Pantone color. Is it the oh, red? Okay. That's the red. Color. Okay. Yeah. If anyone wanted to know. Uh, nope. And then. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Cut. Uh, and then we started talking, and I wanted to have a column. And then this is last summer. And then we, sp this was a discussion over three months because we couldn't really align. Like Jörg wanted me to interview young designers, but then we both came to a conclusion it doesn't. That's not really sustainable either. Pushing out a new yeah, thing I don't every really give a shit. because where's the support after, right? right? Like it's good for press, but then a young designer still struggles and still will get their order canceled because they deliver one day late, whatever. Right. Uh, so we decided let's do actual. Well, interesting people, but successful people at whatever they do. And then I did Peter at, as my first guest, and it was amazing. Mm. Yeah. So and I've been doing it. Is history. Is history. Yeah. yeah. And then I did Rick, I think, like a month later, which was amazing. You have all the homies. Like, I'm yeah. the Rolodex. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Get this shit <laughs> I did. going with a bang. Yeah. Who's your dream interview for Brenda's Business, the column? Uh, so many people. I mean, the list is endless. Well, besides strong things. Yeah. Uh, f fully. I'm, <laughs> you asked me on the podcast first. I wanted to meet you guys for an article. What? Um, Wait, we fucking blew it? God no, damn it. No, no, I said End no. the pod. End the pod. <laughs> All right, thanks, Brenda. This has been Go great. Bye. Fuck off. <laughs> no, that will still happen, but I wanted to meet you guys first because like, you know, you have no idea how someone is in real life, you know? So what are we... Are dream we, guest. Are we Brenda's Wait, business worthy? Stop. Okay, dream <laughs> guest. I would like to have uh, Renzo Russell. Ooh. Oh, the God. Wow. Yeah. Because he's... <laughs> what's I feel like he's a divisive guy. Is he though? I feel like he's kind of chilled out a little. I mean, what he like, he destroyed Helmet Lang, so that's no not comment. Great. Um, <laughs> oh, I right, think you want to book him, my bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think he's one of the group. Like OTB is one of the groups that doesn't fire their creative directors every year. Mm. Luke and Lucy Meyer have been at Trisanda mm -hmm. for years. I mean, Glenn Martins has also, it's not already been like two years, three years. Yeah, um, John Galliano. I mean, Anna Winter placed him at Magella, I think, but he's still, he's been there for years. You have a crazy profile of brands. Like, I didn't ever mm. think about it. Because you always think, obviously, Mani, like Aaron, Francesco has also been there for years. So it seems to me like a very stable group. So, uh, yeah. Um, Helmet's the only bag fumble, I feel like. I know yeah. they were trying to guess creative director thing. They had Shane Oliver, they had whoever. Yeah, that was a bag fumble. Um, yeah. I mean, they don't have it anymore. It's fast retailing oh, now. The Uniqlo shit. people who are really fucking it up. But um, <laughs> Get in line. <laughs> <laughs> get in line. No, I, I, I really want to... But there's... No, there's so many people. And also, I will talk to anyone who's interesting. Do you think, just real quick on like the, the big fashion houses, do you think there's any big changes coming? Like we keep hearing rumors about Matthew Williams at Givenchy and yeah. if his time is up there, Simon Jacques Mou might be fucking placed somewhere, Ricardo, Tishi, unemployed. Alessandra Michelle, unemployed. free agents, unemployed. They're just... Uh, oh Bob and Soho in sweatpants, I guess. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations or <laughs> any, any no. predictions? No so recommendation. I also do this for a living, insider trading. Cause, so mm. I'm just selling gossip mm. to people. Um, who I want to see. I mean, the Matthew Williams thing, now that he, Karin Reutfeld is styling now. Mm. So I don't think she would do this if, if it's only for one season. Okay. Right. You know, you couldn't get her to do just like one little project do it was very her to keep his job then also like on the flip oh, side oh for maybe? sure she's okay. a little bit of a babysitter or like industry approval that's sure. just how it works if, even if it's shitty um we all thought he was leaving last year for the what's uh, julian dosena a guy from paco rabanne mm -hmm. um, but then it hasn't happened yet so and even you know we thought martin rose at lv like a louis vuitton as a set yeah. deal and then or they realized Bonner, yeah um what do you think of Pharrell at louis Mm -hmm. What do you think of Pharrell at LV? Did you like the concert? I merch? understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I understand the discussion of frustrated designers who are waiting for their chance, but it's just not the reality of these how these brands work anymore. anymore. Yeah. No, it isn't because of like Virgil um, and like what he did. No, because of everyone. I okay. think people, you know, it's it, it can also be Molly May, a pretty little thing. Like you need someone <laughs> with. A platform nowadays to sell I think maybe there will be a different structure of the creative director who has little to do with the design and then we will be more public about who are actually the women who are ready to mm, like it. who will actually be the designers under that house because right now no one's talking about them you right. just know like 
through people in the Face, industry. Right. Exactly. And you know all my friends at Dior, my friends at but no one speaks about them. So maybe there's a chance for a different public structure mm. of like there's I a like creative that. director. Like a masthead that you see the magazine. Exactly. Like who's doing at least what? that's what I would you got hope. LeBron and you got the rest of the team. Yeah, yeah, because it's still the way that the um CSM students just get picked up by those brands and then put in these houses. Like they're all having great jobs, just no one speaks about them. Um so I would hope that yeah, doesn't answer if I whether or not I like it, but I don't think it oh, matters. I didn't ask if you liked it. I just said, what do okay, you think? Okay, what do you think? Yeah. I don't think it matters whether okay. or not you approve. I think you have to be with the times, and this is how the industry works now. So it's the same discussion with, oh, the influencer as a writer, me. I mean, yeah. also, that ignores my masters in journalism, but right. it, th j this is just the reality of it all. This is don't hate the player, hate the game. Type yeah, and are you adapting or will you find new ways? Mm. I think. I feel like I will sound like the. Everyone has the same hours as Beyonce. This is not what I mean, obviously. <laughs> Get up off your ass and work. <laughs> exactly, yeah. and work. Well, speaking no. of how the industry works, um, how much harder did the fashion world start sucking your dick when you became fashion director of O32C? Crazy. Yeah. Really? I'm sure I'm chewing ice. It's totally fine. Like, you literally noticed a legit shift yeah. in, like, free stuff, I mean, invites. I don't accept free stuff, like, giftings, oh, right. pretty much. Not because of journalistic integrity. Um <laughs> And don't have, e have clear, any. Because you're no longer broke. <laughs> no, I have a you price. You can drugs. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, as an influencer, a gift is never a gift, right? Mm. Oh, of course. Pretty qu pre quid, quid pro, pro quo. Oh. Yeah, Excuse and it doesn't pay your rent. So you just well, signal to brands. And you just flip them on yeah. StockX. Oh, I'm too lazy shit. to do that. But um, <laughs> I think, yeah, it doesn't pay your rent. They still, the brands expect something. Okay, your question was, how did it change? Even more the than I actually thought. how much harder thought. did the fact world yeah. start sucking your dick? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> exactly. Um, even more than I expected, actually. Really? The, the, however big your platform is, if you're with a magazine or if you, if like people love print. So if there's any chance for someone to get into a magazine, it, they will do anything to get into print. Um, magazines still matter. The way magazines still matter, um, even if they're dying, the way people approach me has changed instantly. Where was, was there. Was there any like satisfying moment? Because honestly, I think Lawrence and I experienced this where like when we were first starting out, people would shit on us and mm -hmm. like be like, oh, fuck you, you little mm -hmm. peon, surf, whatever. Sure. And then all of a sudden you're put in a position of authority or power and people are like, oh my God, how are you? For sure. Let's connect. Let's link. Let's yeah, look at Bill. Drinks. Let's connect. <laughs> I mean, I'm a very unapproachable person. Are you I vengeful? Think? Are you vindictive? Or do you? <laughs> no. Okay. Not vengeful. But I don't. I Also, my magazine is like this. Like, I will forward emails to Jörg and he's like, they're not an advertiser. Like, don't. Like, Woo! you don't. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're even uh, like crazier than me What's in this regard. What's O32C cost? I don't know, you actually. Put it on a, yeah, plastic. I think this is like with everyone, it depends on who you are, yeah. you know? Like anything cool, maybe it's not as much and anything commercial. I'm, I'm just making shit up. I, I actually don't know. I can ask. I never did. Um, I think it varies. Mm. Revenge is a dish best served cold, cold? at a free press dinner. <laughs> Fully. <laughs> yeah, and no, I don't. <laughs> slider. <laughs> um, yeah, the invites have... I mean, the people in my email folder of the O32C email, it's crazy. I also didn't know that so many independent magazines now just um, take full editorials out of their email folder and put them in. Like the editorials what? weren't like even... releases? No, I get sent full editorials, like spreads of 15 pages. From Do the you... brand? No, from anyone. Do you want to put this in the magazine? Like a random photographer or Who's like a... Who's paying for that? No one. So they're just giving they it really for free. They really want it for exposure? No, no, paid for yeah. the production? They... So it's quite. Is there anything good? Have so you ever discovered anyone like that? Well, no. Sometimes there is, but oh, thirty two C doesn't work Anybody that way. Copy and paste an editorial. <laughs> <laughs> but there's fully magazines out there, I think, that are full of editorials that weren't even fully. They were sent to fifteen, and they were just the first ones to say yes. Crazy. So what's your point of Fuck. view then, as a magazine? You know, sure. if if this wasn't. Oh, it's free. That's my POV. <laughs> yeah, quite crazy. Um, a lot of like, uh, oh my god, I had this experience. Did you? I you didn't go to the Fear of God after party. No. I we had this. We were invited, but we went to In and Out. Yeah. yeah, we were too hungry. Fair, <laughs> fair. Someone like what's it called? Like when you brush someone's f shoulder, like someone like rent, like when you Fucking do that. big dog them. Yes. Okay. Someone did that to me, shoulder and check. I know for a fact their manager emailed me five times mm. to be on Brenda's business. Oh no! Would you like to say no. who this loser is? No. Okay. Kanye no. West. You're on notice. <laughs> God damn. Um. No. Um, what about on the flip on the flip side of that? What's been like the best like the kind of like a pinch me moment where you're just like, holy shit, I can't believe this is my life. In the oh, I have world. that. I fully have that every day. I'm besides coming this podcast. <laughs> I have that every day. I, I'm very grateful. I also think, I don't know if it's the same for you. I always wanted to be in fashion, 
And um, no, I just ended up here. Sure. Like okay. Yeah. I'm I sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, Clothes are sick. I I I always <laughs> wanted to be in fashion, so to now be going to events and knowing the editors that you looked up to or knowing the and saying hi to people because I know what it's like to go to an event and almost be too nervous to not show up because you mm, don't yeah. know a single person yeah. you're a quote-unquote nobody it, that's how it works in yeah, fashion right it's yeah. super so I have that every day the pinch me moment and with O32C and me combined I can I've never heard a no for an interview request really? wow. so that's it's amazing you're shooting 100% from the field yeah that's crazy yeah. well so okay so that to me alone, I mean, Rick is also, that was a fate, you know, he's a, he's a friend. So, but to, yeah, but that was still a great fucking interview. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You still got to do the damn work just yeah. because your boy's like, yeah, I'll do it. Brandon. Yeah. You're I'll do it. Crush it. You know? Yeah. I think we'll do a part two this year because we yeah. only got up to his show. Like we only mm, got up to 2002. So, yeah. so yeah. So keep um, it locked. No, that's a pinch me moment. It's every day. I mean, even yesterday being invited to the press preview of the Met, the people that it's every day. I, I think. pinch myself. Every yeah. Day. yeah. No, but fully like I'm, I get emotional every day because I'm really not where I want to be yet, but to be recognized, to not be scared to go to an event, to work with your favorite brands. I mean, all of the brands I wear, which is not a lot, all of them know who I am and work with me, which right. is, you know, and they're the most hard to get to. So, I, yeah. So do you ever feel like, so we're talking about pinch me moments mm -hmm. and this idea of like building a platform. What's your pinch me moment? To, what's up? What's your pinch me moment? You, right now. Oh, sure. Talking to Brenda from Brenda's <laughs> Business. Are you fucking wow. kidding me? Turning down the fear of God after party invite to go hit in and out yeah. with my boy, Larry. <laughs> so, you, we're so we're talking about pitch me moments, building your own platform mm -hmm. versus trying to write for others. Um, do you ever feel the need to reconcile the legit and respected career of being a fashion director mm -hmm. with the fake and bullshit one that you also have of being an influencer? Okay, I never really had... I understand everyone has to pay their rent, but I, n I always had other sources of income, mm. disruptive, my archive and consulting, which is still my main source of income. Right. That's where I make the most money from. So I never had to like, quote unquote, sell out. Okay. I was a bitch even as an influencer, <laughs> like no less than I'm being as an editor. So I don't, it's nice to have a mix also of everything. Right. I wouldn't change that. Yeah, I think it makes you desirable as somebody who like can clearly get shit done and move in like all these different circles within. I industry. guess so, yeah. but also for like you have flexibility that switch other hitter. people don't have. Super black. But also for a PR perspective, from like if they're still super traditional, they don't know where to place you. Mm. It's press. Also, like press for a show doesn't get dressed, right? You don't get samples. Or it's an influencer, and they're a bit like, uh, I don't, mm. <laughs> I don't know how to approach, approach you. Yeah, yeah. So I because it's not a lot of people. She that is the prototype. Fully. Yeah. Patient zero. Your job, <laughs> is, your job is Polly. Yeah. Um, well, I want to ask about another facet of your being Polly fashion life. <laughs> well, I'm not going to go. We're not dad ass yet. Don't Please worry about don't. It. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about disruptive, which is mm -hmm. your store slash archive. Mm -hmm. um, how many pieces? How big is that collection right now? Okay. Also, kind of is mixed in with my own wardrobe. Like I all have it in one thing. Okay. Yeah. You so I started. Yeah. <laughs> fully. You shit what you wear. Yes? Yeah, I was just staring. American saying. Um, yeah, Not sure. Right. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't shit where you eat. No, I know this. Um, <laughs> I started this in 2017, where there were already a lot of archives out there, but a lot of them were menswear or super, super expensive. And I wanted a fashion archive with kind of ish affordable clothes and everyday clothes. Because okay. mostly fashion archive for you is like the crazy vintage piece that you're never going to wear. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to sell like cotton pieces, mostly Helmut, stretchy stuff that you can wear every day. No, it's very big. It's subscription based. So you kind of, oh. you get an email. You don't pay for the subscription, but you get an email with a password uh, to a website and then you get access for 24 hours. Ooh. But how Sorry many pieces? I can high. never, <laughs> 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 no, I can, that was also like <laughs> such an organic thing. I just knew I couldn't compete with an Essence who's refreshing their page sure. every day and has no yes. products. I couldn't, like it was going to look the same in two weeks. And also it's based off computer-driven algorithms on yeah. like how one to fully. slash prices. Yeah, <laughs> fully. Um, so I don't know how many pieces I have. I also, I, I sell less now because I don't need to, I, I make a lot of money with consulting. So I sell less and just rent or lend it out to designers who will then copy. Everything good already exists in fashion, sure. right? So I don't see the, like, I don't see it as a bad thing of copying a pattern if no one's producing it anymore. You're keeping right. the wheels of industry turning. Fully. Job so designers <laughs> will come in and 
take pictures or take the thing home and send it back to me. And sometimes it also it depends how I charge who you are. Sometimes <laughs> an hourly rate if you if I you know it yeah. Who borrows the most from the archive? I can't say. Okay. Mm. Has anyone ever fucked up a garment? Uh, I've done that once or twice for like the stylist who's styling for a rapper and they're such a fan of Magella and then I never see it back. But I, that was like 2019. I've never done that again. Okay. No. Damn. Also, you can't charge that much for loaning something. Right. So those like 200 euros and then the compared to what I'm losing, it's not really... And no one tags like the archive right. in effect. You know, you tag the, the you tag the stylist. So this kind of press doesn't really do anything for me. Yeah. What's the most you paid? And I guess this question might be kind of like moot because it is like your personal mm -hmm. wardrobe as well. But what's the most you've paid for a single garment for the disruptive archive? Oh my god, I'm such a treasure hunter. I never like everything's right. cheap. Everything's really? a steal yeah. or a deal. Yeah. I mean, or you just fucking shoplift it, right? Yeah. <laughs> or I shoplifted. No, I mean, are you buying from like old German grannies or like? Yes, okay. I have found people in the weirdest circle. Like, I will meet someone or be at a flea market and then ask for their number and like email some random grandma in Italy and she has some old no, comic or something. Like, I've crazy. gone to places and I jug. It got harder in COVID, obviously, but now that I'm back, yeah. um, like traveling, it's. Did you do any hunting while in New York or LA? No. Also here, I, I don't. Besides, what's not good? You saw it. <laughs> yeah, no, I still. I I mean, my place. Is, I'm not super informed, so I always go to James Valoria. Okay. It's not my style necessarily, but I like yeah, the. It's like, a lot more colorful. I, I think. I think. <laughs> I, I think they have a cute uh, curation. I always go to Tokyo Seven because my friends that work at Rick, that's where they drop off their things. Oh, mm. that's tip, dude. Pay attention at home. Yeah. But I think the sales employees just take. Oh, like, I, I think the good stuff the doesn't really too. doesn't really end up on yeah. the shop floor. Let's talk about your consulting real quick. So it mm -hmm. says on your website that you do. Your oh my god, I haven't updated work. my website in two years. <laughs> well, it's, it was pretty professional. We checked okay. it out. This is still timeless. Your consult, Squarespace. Your consultancy work is based around personal branding. Yeah. How would you define your personal brand, okay. Brenda? That, that's probably Russia. an AI text. I'm guessing. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> consulting. <a> <laughs> yeah, consulting work. I mean, I know it's very popular with Gen Z. They're all like, "Pay me, pay me for my time." Era. That only really started two years ago for me. So I was giving out knowledge to everyone and I would still do that. But I realized people re like kept saying to me, you, ha you have to be paid for this. You can't just because I dish out everything I know about mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah. Um, I have several forms of consulting. Sometimes I consult on design. So I do the very first mood boards. Then oh. there's a design process, which I'm, I have no involvement in. I would never. This is a true talent that I don't have. And then at the very end, sometimes I step into curation. Okay. Mm, I also get paid for being critical. Like the most successful people, in my opinion, are those who don't just have yes men around them. And this happens to everyone, though. At some point, like no one's really critical if they're on your payroll. So I have three personal clients that I will literally, they just want this in text form. Everything negative I see wow. about them That's at so this, fire, at this very job. moment. Yeah. You literally I was get like, paid it's to amazing. be a hater. Yeah. Professional I, I hater. More, oh I fully get paid to be a hater. The fucking dream. Mm, also, people. <laughs> are so close to their own product of oh, right. sometimes, right? Yeah. So they don't realize what's They're wrong with this. I also, choice. I'm obsessed with pop culture and everything that's going on in fashion. So I just give kind of like market overviews mm -hmm. to them. Like what's everyone doing? Who did I hear is Trend getting fired? Forecasting in a nutshell-ish? Yeah, but not so much. More just like these are what the groups are buy like doing right now. Um, LVMH is investing, you know, they have a oh, whole so arm of like investment. industry shit. Yeah, it. who I think is getting fired. Who, Ooh, how, did I, how did I? Gossip. I get paid for gossip, wow. like literally. Um, You've monetized <laughs> hating and gossiping. No, You're I know. A fucking legend. This is why I have pinch me moments every day. Oh, I know. I guess we kind of have to. We just, yeah. do, we just yeah. do it publicly and for way less money. Yeah. <laughs> no, I still, I still do it for free. Also, be, so, to my friends and stuff. And then personal branding. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I sign an NDA for ev for every client that I do. They don't well, sign an NDA like, from me because they, are, you know. <laughs> no, no, they're pretty tough. I think. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, airtight <laughs> airtight and personal branding it's when your product or you yourself get diluted a bit lost in the sauce people say yes. so this is just how Future do we get famously. back to square one what are you about what are your values how do we communicate this how do you still make money and do the commercial jobs while standing for something while yes. having especially for example if you're an influencer of the millions you get everything for free so everyone at the start will say oh i will never uh, lose track of my personal style yes you will if louis mm. vuitton gucci and dior send you shit right. every day Ooh, i know someone so, become a mannequin 
Yeah, fully. And you I know someone that, that maybe could use mm-hmm. your services. Okay. That someone might be sitting at this table. Okay, I can send you my day rate. No oh, comment. What's your no comment? Rate? I can't for say. Friend, for friends and family. Just, just, just make it like two exit. Yeah. No, no. My day rate for friends and family, which is not, I really only accept people that I really like for okay. this, that I have my rent in Berlin paid by one day rate. Fire. And that is the cheapest thing I will do, which is Berlin yeah. rent is not so Berlin's, much. Berlin's pretty, a pretty cheap city. Yeah. But, but yeah. this is for my peace of mind. I sure. will have one day of work and have, I know this is a, like crazy privilege. Um, so this is my baseline <laughs> of I will not do anything under that. And I also wouldn't advise anyone to be on, um, what's it, when you uh, are on a retainer. Oh, yeah. Because in the end, you always have to deliver more than is, in the, is like promised at the beginning and people can always that reach you. Which is like it sounds nice in theory, but it people will always always step their boundaries. Mm-hmm. Like well, a like a giver yeah. doesn't have boundaries, yeah. but a ta- you know a giver has boundaries, but a taker doesn't. Mm. How's that say? Yeah. Anyways, so I have a day rate for everyone. I also used to do half day, but now I don't. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. to sum up, your personal brand is Expensive. gossiping, <laughs> privileged hater. Yes. Yes. Cool. <laughs> All right, no, fully. I, I. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. The richest hater. <laughs> <laughs> it's also. Yeah. I mean, I have a network of people now who recommend me, and in the end, my my goal in like twenty years from now is to be. Oh, Brenda was attached to this project, so it has industry mm. approval. You know. We got to break the NDAs then. Yeah. Yeah. No, but people talk anyways. I mean. Yeah. Do you have a dream client that you would love to consult with one day? I, I have them. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, There's you already have I can't them. Say. There's no one Damn. that you want to manifest that isn't on the fucking roster yet? Michael Kors. Oh, well, yeah. He, he needs it. Uh, <laughs> take your sunglasses I don't think off. <laughs> Michael Kors needs anything. That's true. Yeah. He's fucking ri- Is he a billionaire? Mm, he might be. For well, sure is laughing all the way to the bank. He might be. He might be. Well, Brenda, people hire you because of your expertise in all things fashion, pop culture, historical. Do you future. guys want to hear the Michael Kors net worth game? Yeah. Okay. Do we over under five hundred million dollars? Over. Over six hundred million dollars. Yeah. What a legend. Rounded up to a billion. What and a the picture legend. of him is wearing sunglasses inside. Okay, moving on. He oh. is. He also has the personal like um like wardrobe fully down. I think like and the veneers and the sunglasses. I mean. Yeah, he's Long Island trash. Yeah, he looks like shit. Yeah. Does he? But it's a uniform. Yeah, but he's Mike. But he's worth six hundred million dollars. Yeah, you can afford to look like shit. Yeah, who gives a fuck? If you don't look like shit, then you're fucking up. Yeah, All you're right, doing wrong. <laughs> People hire you for your expertise, for your knowledge, for your ability to just fucking uh, mm-hmm. put them in their place. <laughs> but let's turn the lens on you for a second. What's a style phase you went through personally that you now regret the most? Nothing. You know, <laughs> no, Stolen no. AM. I was always dressed like shit. But what <laughs> I, I think this pressure especially on Gen Z with um, being f- eco-friendly, it doesn't give them the freedom to try out things anymore. Like this, oh, staple wardrobe. Everyone has to find their style when they're 19. I'm so happy I didn't have social media as a teenager. Oh, I had sure. a phase Same. every month of the year. So that now the pressure on young people to like find their style. I feel like that's a whole category of content, right? Media, like yeah, find yeah. your style, find your... You can try out things until forever and you can have phases. And those recommendations of what to try out are changing every single fucking day. Yes. So it's like, what are we, we're not learning anything. All we're doing is ingraining um, consumption and not of the uh, conscientious variety. Yeah. And, and like, I will get off my soapbox. <laughs> no, but fully. And I think personal growth, this is like an infinite goal, not a finite thing, right? Yeah. So for people to be like, you have to find out who you are in your early 20s and have to have your and make wardrobe. A TikTok about and, it. and make your TikTok about it. I think that is so much pressure. I still. I'm changing and I'm adapting my opinions every month. Sure. And ma- really? Maybe so we not might see s- you in color one day? No. Ooh, <laughs> no. I still go, but I still go through phases, I think. Yeah. Oh, of course. And I, I have invested so much time on finding out what my style is. People mm-hmm. have jobs and lives. They, they can't, you know, I don't. I work like five <laughs> hours a day. So Fire. I have the time and to figure out my... the day rate. <laughs> fully. <laughs> fully. And I have time to figure out what I want to wear. But, um... I, th- I don't know. I think that's so fa- unfair on young yeah. people. It's so much pressure. On, on this show, we you, say that personal style is a journey, not a destination. F- fully. Yeah. And like everything has to be thrifted and everything has to be this. Like, it. I don't know. I, I imagine it's like being a parent in this age, right? Like you, you get like you have to do everything mm-hmm. right. So I think it's pretty unfair on young people too. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You said you've missed a lot of time. I fully forgot your question also. I'm That's sorry. Okay. No, I don't know what this rant was right. about personal well, style. Here's a pretty simple question. How much do you think you've spent on clothing in your lifetime? 
Okay. Um, I only wear secondhand or I only buy secondhand. So my one thing is I want something. Oh, this is another. Um, I want something that increases in value. I'm very pragmatic. So I want to be able. So for now, and I mean, I'm touch wood, hope I'm not getting robbed. It would be difficult to resell my stuff. It's so specific, actually. Um, I'm not sure how much I spent, but I would be fine for a few years not working, reselling my things. If you just only did that. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. I'm not planning on doing that. Right. I don't know how much I'm spending, but my in my guilty conscience, I always know I can resell it for double. Right. That's I my one. That's, I mean, that's the one probably best takeaway of like the whole resell economy is that you're like, all right, like I can make mistakes. I can take risks. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, everything else is like, I don't know if your dad's explained you the, as soon as the new car leaves the car dealership, right. it's yeah. half the, this is, I mean, it's pretty much the same within fashion unless someone is, something is limited. Sure. Um, but even then it would like, it, maybe you get the retail price right. back, Rick but that's trousers it. Trousers lightly hacked off. <laughs> How, what percent of your wardrobe is Rick? Just like roughly you say. Not that much, but it's my most like basic things that I wear every but day. But you wear it the most. How do yeah. we... No, I think I wear old Helmut the, okay. the most. How do we, Lawrence and I, become friends with Rick Owens? Oh my God, he's the nicest ever. But what? Oh, so how do we become friends with him? I mean, you have to be in the right place, I guess. He's not a very cyber guy. You will not... I mean, he has an email. He's the white whale for the pod. I What's his email? Fully. Without a doubt. What's his email? Very address? easy. His, <laughs> oh, email, <laughs> his email is very easy. It is so funny how like every just R -O famous person, it's like the it's whatever insane. you know, you just guess I got, it. It's um, ro at me.com. Like literally. I mean, Rick I don't know if it's... RickOwens.com. <laughs> It's um, Dick Ovens. <laughs> no, like, but literally every fame. I mean, Anna Winter's email is so. Everyone is so. I remember yeah, the first. Her email. She's not her fucking email, yes, dude. she is. You Kim Kardashian's doing her own emails. Kim K at gmail.com. Yeah. At kmail I remember the first like famous person email I ever got was exactly this experience. I interviewed Virgil for my bachelor's thesis, mm -hmm. and it was v at offwhite.com. Yeah. But he was, he's, he was fire at email. Yeah. He was yeah. like really good with like. He could just, he never slept and was always fucking... No, he never talking. slept. He, I don't know why he gave me the time of day, but that was my first interview I've ever done. Nice. Really? Mm -hmm. Damn. All right. Yeah. Real quick, back to Rick. What's something yeah. about Rick that might surprise us? Even though we are going to become friends with him because we're going to guess his email and then just like uh, strike no, up his friendship. I mean, he's really the nicest person ever. I didn't want to meet him for years because don't meet your idols. I think mm -hmm. we talked about this prior. Like yeah. I always expect, especially in fashion, that everyone is such a letdown. I hope I am not, but I think like, yeah. you know, like people... Everyone who, else though. Um, Ugh. And then a lot of my friends work for him, so they set up like secret, like this is where she will run into him. Oh, and I really? always Little dodged out. No, because I was really nervous that he will suck because I don't know, my castle like, oh, will I crumble. Oh, I went to this gym. Fully. <laughs> yeah. Can I yeah. rotate in? He does not go to a public gym, I think. Um, <laughs> I. Gym must be fire. No, surprising. I think. <laughs> yeah. Surprising is actually more how Owens Corp is structured, his company. Um, in fashion, most people switch their jobs every 11 months. And um, people that I know that work there have worked there forever. They started... Love it, yeah. sta exactly, love it right? whatever. Or it's where else do you go after, Rick? You know, when you're... When you have... Yeah. Um, and and they've worked know, in the yeah. store. So someone in the store that's will true. then have... A cr after nine years of being there, have the craziest titles. And I think mm. that's... Well, not surprising about him, but surprising for fashion is that people stay loyal to him. But he's super nice. The nicest guy. Is Tyrone Sussman the most fun person in fashion to party with? I haven't hung out with him so many times, but everyone that speaks about him just says you cannot hate on him. He's the loveliest person so ever. Who's, who's your favorite person in fashion to party with? I'm in bed by 10 p.m. Okay, so before, like, no, when, I'm, when it's 9 p.m. and you're hanging out, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I know, I'm really not at fashion parties at all. I think they are... It's going to sound so arrogant. They're mostly for people trying to net, not that I don't have to still meet people, but network. I think, quote unquote, important people are there to say hi at the event and then they're out. Yeah, I am by. So I don't party with anyone from, like, I'm not any. So in your opinion, fashion parties are overrated and pointless. Not overrated. I think they're also for the consumers and they're for the oh. fashion students and they are the open bar for the fashion students to mm. so oh. enjoy themselves. Yeah, and way. they will, no, me too, me too. I just, I, I cannot be up at, 9 a.m. the next morning seeing everyone else i also i really i don't do drugs and most people do so at some point you have nothing to talk about with people because mm, yeah. they're speaking nonsense yeah, yeah also because because they're pitching you on so many <laughs> good business ideas <Yeah. laughs> well this is also people i don't want to blame 
drug abuse on them is also very overworked people who are expected by their bosses mm -hmm. to still be socializing and out at 11 p.m. Not for sure. So this is, a, I don't have to do that. People suck up to me. My influencing status, now maybe this, but um, these are very hardworking people. I'm not excusing drug abuse again, but I understand where this comes from because yeah. they don't work nine hours. They were. Th this is like an endless cycle and fashion deals are made at 2 a.m. This is how, it's super toxic. There's but no they no work-life balance at all. At all. Yeah. For and the worst collabs <laughs> are born at 2, yeah. 2 a.m. in a bathroom. <laughs> no, <Stop>. fully. <laughs> but this is where it happens. I'm doing Fendi Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is how it happens. And there's also no HR for most people. If you're freelance, any stylist, any yeah. producer, any anyone, you ha if you're being abused, you have no one to talk to. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So this is, I mean, it's really bad. Yeah, yeah. you gotta suck your way to the top, dude. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> well, look, Lawrence and I, we're gonna hit up Rick. We're mm -hmm. gonna come to Berlin at some point. We're not mm -hmm. gonna party at night or go hammer, or at least not with you. We'll uh, hit up some other people to go I will drop you off at back <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What are we doing, though? The three of us. Let's say we're in Berlin. We're in your home turf. Uh, mm -hmm. We're in Mitte. We're in fucking Katzenberg, whatever the fuck. What are we doing for a day out in Berlin? Yeah. Okay, I'm lazy, and I invite everyone to my house. Okay. Because okay. I have a hosting house, I would say. What does that mean? Yeah. Oh, it's big. hosting friendly. Got it. Yeah, hosting friendly. I love having people over. Um, I only have had this nice apartment since two years when I left Neukölln for Mitte. Mitte is, like, I would say, like the Soho of Berlin. Um I mean, same as everywhere. It's the cute gluten-free coffee shop and then the bookstores <laughs> and then the thrifting. We do have good thrifting in Berlin. Oh, I love the thrift with the fucking goat, dude. Uh, it's you know really all good. the best shit for sure. The best shit, I don't know. But I'm a digger for sure. Um, and then we have great museums and then it's dinner. What's Not your favorite restaurant in vegan? Berlin? Are we doing no. vegan though? Oh, that's right. No. Um, for me... Like vibes go over food. I have okay. all the best food in my Welcome house. So when <laughs> 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 no, but when I'm out with my friends, I, my favorite setting is the long dinner that turns into drinks. Like you don't yeah. have to go to a bar, but it's like kind of a like the Odeon, for example, sure. in New York. I love 100%. it just because you can sit there for five hours. You don't yeah. have to. No one's kicking you out because you're already spending an outrageous amount of money. It's not like <laughs> the. I, are you done with that? That's yeah. very new, like America to me. So right. you get rushed out of everything. Yeah. So my dream setting. Um. So I go to the very classic spots with this uh borchardt it's a schnitzel place they get me a vegan schnitzel um what, what is it mushroom tempeh i have never asked <laughs> it's definitely chicken yeah it, is it is it awesome because oh like it. <laughs> it's not that great <laughs> i can't but believe it's not chicken <laughs> <laughs> no it's super cliche so it's borchardt grill royale it's a steakhouse and paris bar which is french so nothing for vegans but if i do leave my house and i mostly have dinners with like 10 friends i want to be able to stay there for six hours that. and it turns into drinking and people right. smoke still inside in berlin one margarita over the course of five hours no sometimes <laughs> i do two Ooh, <laughs> i'm crazy whoa, yeah what's not too crazy. well the less you drink the worse it gets with your hangovers mm. it just yeah, it's like a vicious cycle i will say you are the only person in the history of finale and it's the oldest bar uh, who's only had one has ever ordered a margarita <laughs> it also looked really shitty was i was good? expecting like was a it good no but i didn't want to say anything so, all right. So, kids, if you're at home and you go to Finelli's, don't get the margarita. Oh. Get anything but. Get anything but. Get something that's been sealed outside of Finelli's and shipped in. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> With the thing still on. Maybe. All right. I want to ask. I want to go big picture yeah. as we come to the end of the first segment of the podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just zooming out, 35,000 foot view. What's happening right now in fashion that is really exciting you? I can't say. What do you mean? Nothing's oh, making you like excited? Games, it would be like a paid. Uh, no. A few of my friends play. are getting things like getting new jobs and they're really exciting but they're getting announced in the next few weeks oh, oh so, so, you, so there's a so there's like a shuffle happening that you think yes. is going to be good yes. overall the and that's yes. carousel yeah it's not Givenchy mm. but um yeah like are these like are these like bold faced names or is it like homies like going to, into like the ateliers and shit everything there's a drone outside of your house really do you see that oh well yeah are we at the fear of god show <laughs> that was so bad ugh um you know you? Yeah, um, exciting things are happening for everyone around me. So I feel like, two yeah, weeks, I mean, like as, <laughs> as much as I say, like, fashion is so toxic, I'm surrounded by the best people and still making so many more friends and everyone supporting each other. I'm making so much money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making so much money. No, I'm not, I'm not, not that crazy. But um, I'm just excited for everyone in general. Okay. Well, I and I feel like things, I, like, beautiful. I say everything's so dark, things are getting better. 
a little bit. That's half full. I like that. Like sometimes the models get food backstage now. Wow. Oh, mm. wow. yeah, dude. Yeah. Let's not get too Shout crazy. out to them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this. What's your least favorite thing about the fashion industry right now? In 2023. Where to start? Well, yeah. I guess there's a start to everything. I mean, I guess everything performative, like where you see it's all black models on the runway, but no one behind the scenes, mm. you know? So that happens a lot where you see the amazing editorial and you know exactly who, who produced it, who shot it, who did the makeup and none of them. Like, or if it's so, copy and pasted from an email. <laughs> yeah, but I think people and also younger audience are make, getting so much more aware of what is happening and who, the, who to look at for in the credits. And I, th I, I think people are smarter now. So the performative wokeness is not working like maybe the industry thinks it is. Yeah, but a lot of things aren't changing. Like payroll for freelance journalists aren't changing. I, the Nepo models are getting paid the most. And, you know, it, so it, it's a slow... Pr I'm trying to stay positive. That's why I'm saying things are changing. Okay. I, yeah, I don't know. Well, let's get positive. And I'm hoping Lua will get the LVMH prize. Ooh. Yeah, but I don't we've think been, he will. We've been trying to get Raul on the pod, but he's just so fucking busy. So yeah. busy. No, I think after like Jacques Mousse, I think LVMH never wants to have another independent designer become so big that it can't can't take under the wings. You right. know, he's independent. Like he never said yes to sure. selling. Sure. Like, I don't need. I don't need y'all. I don't need you. He's so cooking. that's why, in my opinion, Charlotte Knowles, Peter Doe never got the prize because they were too big. Damn. So I'm still hopeful, but I I think maybe he's too big. Really? Where they? It, that's scary to them, right? Like another. It's also been around for like ten. 12 years at this point. He's yeah, no, like I mean, new, he's, yeah, no, he's not new. Are no, people he aren't might seeing be him now. Too big to yeah. be exploited is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, Literally. yeah, like yeah, uh, wants to do, wants to be his own house and maybe not join. So I think they're a bit wary of that, but I, that would be a positive thing. Okay. Well, let's get positive. To me. Let's get, let's get freaky real let's quick. Get nasty. <laughs> Moving to the second segment of the podcast, Brenda, which okay. is called Dad's. Sucking and fucking. Meats and cheeks. Sexy. Uh, would nervous. you recommend dating within the fashion industry? Never. <laughs> really? I mean, I am sadly straight, which is so embarrassing to, to admit now. Um, I've <laughs> only ever dated within fashion and it backfired. Every time. Without Every fail. time. Damn. Have you Every learned time. your lesson? No, of course not. I mean, <laughs> it's also... Where you find guys in fashion? <laughs> like, that's the one thing, first of all. There's not many... Um, I think and I, I still ran through them all. <laughs> no, oh, you, if you look at my DMs, like there's no one there. It's just Damn, girls asking for Tavi advice. <laughs> like literally. Um, no, you I still. Size up or size down? I still. Excuse me. On tabbies. What's what? What do you need to know about tabbies? Yeah. I don't know. Not look at my size. DMs. Um, Which no. toe is it between? <laughs> Yeah, like, are they true to size? Don't they hurt? Like stuff like that. Anyways, dating within fashion. Yes, still because. Every time I've tried to date outside, it's either someone doesn't understand your lifestyle. Mm. I'm also very independent towards also narcissistic independent. Like I will live my life no matter what. And then it just doesn't work when someone has a nine to five, even if yeah. I try. Like gotcha. I, you know, I want to, if I want to go to New York for a month, I can live here for free, right? Like it's, it's not super expensive for me. I try to get someone to fly me in and if you want to come, you can come, but if I'm assuming you can't. So it's, it's, yeah. I think the lifestyles also for some people, you do become kind of the, f like the fashion victim, right? That's a, l a lot of what we talk about. It's our, like, it's just not interesting to someone who isn't in this space, yeah, I guess. Fair. Yeah. I but then it. if you're dating someone in fashion, that's all you talk about. Yeah. Kind of on the that's flip side. That's so boring. Yeah. So boring. Yeah. And also, I mean, in fashion, I've, been cheated on twice and then it was like with a model oh. like whole thing no, so and Brando. then <laughs> i know embarrassing so i don't know if, if that will well, change these guys in fashion have it too good it's like shooting fish in a barrel for them yeah you know? i mean yeah. i guess Shit's it will like be like <laughs> Vassar, <bro. laughs> i think because of dating apps especially in cities like this it will be like this for everyone even if you're a banker you, you have access to the instagram model or to the whoever sure. so i don't think this is like fashion exclusive could you ever date a guy that wears color Yes, I mean, all black? I'm also, I'm, I swear to myself, I'm not posting another boyfriend ever again. Oh, so you wait, can wear color. Wait, you hard posted a guy and then it didn't work out and you're like, what the fuck? Embarrassing. Damn, oh no. Embarrassing. You went back and did you wipe all uh, his I stuff? also think as an influencer, you, people get so diluted when they have an audience that they think people care about their partner or their avocado toast like that's you know, like you should always strategically stick with what you became big with. Mm. So, I mean, e unless you guys have a complete lifestyle change and you want to talk about, 
I don't know. This doesn't bode well for our restaurant tour friend over here. Or our golf influencership. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. No, but people sign up for you for a specific thing. And sure. unless you're Damn, a mega celebrity, a celebrity is going to do that, right? Like, here's my new yoga retreat. Here's my whatever. But as an influencer, people don't necessarily care so much about my private well, life, I don't like think. You, as a micro-influencer, you can, like, show off more of, like, a holistic lifestyle, 360 degree I don't think image, people no? care. I think people, for me, sign yeah, up I'm for... Letterboxd immediately. <laughs> <laughs> no, people, for me, sign up for fashion and for industry or career advice. And that is it. And why would you want to post everything else? Same with, like, this instinct of having to prove that you're out Friday night and oh, posting sure. that and that you're the at dinners. Bullshit, yeah. I regret it every day when I do it because, like, who cares right. if i have i'm having you know, fun look i'm having fun look i'm i have a reservation at this restaurant on a friday who do you who are you proving that to so i'm yeah back Yourself. to your question can a boyfriend wear color yes because yeah. i'm not gonna post you uh, wait yeah. so now i gotta know what is your secret hobby that you're not sharing with people because you're like they don't give a fuck i'm not sharing that <sighs> Your secret fucking You're too good. vintage car collectors. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, no. video games. <laughs> no. like, she's a big gamer. Big no, yo-yoer. it's not it's not so interesting. I think. Gamer. <laughs> I'm not a gamer. I played Sims. Okay. But only to ever them. Yes, and with the cheat codes. Like I was rich from Unlimited the beginning. Money. I never I tried Same. playing with without has motherload. What was this I code? I did that. Sorry. No, I was only <laughs> <Sorry>, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. I was only into Nintendogs when I was 12, got the Nintendo DS, and then it was Sims, and then it was nothing after. Yeah, and it went. It was Sims, and now it's Sims. Nice. Ask I don't get it. Tabby's fit. You know what a simp is? No. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. A simp is like a, a guy who like sucks up to you and is like, how's your day, Brenda? What's going on? Oh, cute. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. A reply guy. <laughs> yeah. A nice guy. Yeah. I think AI will nice. just do that for yeah. you now, no? A too nice that it's annoying. You want, a, you want an AI boyfriend? I want the AI uh, assistant, like the people what? assistant, like people oh. fully. I'm so behind, but people fully have the AI map out their tour, like their trips if they're going somewhere. Try that. Not great, but it will get better. Helpful. It will get helpful. better. I did um, part of Mia Khalifa's intro with AI. Oh really? That was my first. What you didn't? Because you didn't know her material by mm-hmm. uh, no, heart. Like I you actually do? didn't. <laughs> I didn't. We're familiar with her filmography. <laughs> her filmography. No, I it's haven't like looked at videos. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've heard. I've, yeah. <laughs> I've heard. I actually wonder where um, Two Girls, One Cups are. Oh, the Two one Girls? Cup. Where are yeah. they now? Yeah. Dead. Fuck, mm. I don't know. Maybe. Not at the Met Gala. Yeah. Not at the Met Gala. So what is the way to Brenda Hashtag's heart? People actually have, sadly, no way to reach me. I don't mm-hmm. open my DMs. Oh. So oh no, not the li- not the literal. Oh, literal. I thought like, we're still it, talking about dating. Yeah, yeah you, like humor. Yeah. Oh, humor. They have to be hot. Humor. Smart, no. Ugly. Um, do you see the guy on the roof now? What is going on? Do you think he's operating the drone, or that's two separate things happening? I think that's two separate things. Yeah. <gasps> Welcome to Brooklyn, baby. This Do is flip. scary. <laughs> Way to my heart. I think mostly humor. I don't want to be the funny one. Okay. Really? Or the entertain. No. You want to be entertained. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Dance monkey. Yeah, for real. Yeah. I think I want to be entertained. <laughs> and I would lo- love someone to be smarter than me. It's not that hard, but I would like to no, be. No, I was going to say, that's a, I think that's a tough task. But not too much smarter. Yeah. Yeah, not a, not a lot smarter? A lot smarter. Really? Okay. You like, want to learn. But, but able I mean, to, like, teach you it's things. a thing like you never want to be the smartest in the room, right? Otherwise, you're not learning anything. Well, if you are, then you're in the wrong fucking room. Yeah, you're you're in the wrong fucking room. Exactly. So for me, it's uh, intellect and humor, I would say. And a Prada outfit. All right, boys. Well, uh, you can't even DM her, so best of luck. (laughs) What is your ideal first date? Is it like one of these long-ass dinners, but just one-on-one? I I like a long-ass dinner. I mean, hopefully you have talked before mutual friends that it's not an awkward interaction. Mm. I think it's very awkward to sit opposite of each other. I like to sit next to each other. Oh, cute. Yeah, because you're very, I mean, you're literally opposite of, like, st- I don't know, the awkward eye it's contact. Good job fully, yeah, exactly. so it's nicer to be on the same side and looking at the same things. Yeah. I feel like then you have stuff to talk Having about. And judging everyone together. Yeah, yeah, so like sitting at a window of a restaurant mm. and looking out like that. Co flanoring. I don't know. Sure. State. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You're just like watching the fucking city okay. happen in front of you. Exactly. That would be, so yeah, but okay. that's mostly my first date is From dinner. Ideal first date of sitting next to someone and taking in the cityscape, as James mm-hmm. said. What is the worst first date that you have ever been on, Brenda? And please regale us with this horror story. Fingers crossed. Oh, my God. 
Actually, yeah. I've only ever, I mean, I vet pretty hard before <laughs> really? someone can take me out on a date. Run the numbers. <laughs> How do you vet them? Do you like, you? they got to be valid with the mutual homies? Yeah, like have good chat at texting. Oh. If it's like... Banter? Yeah, yeah if, banter. if again, I already Banter's think I'm the funnier person. Like, no. <laughs> um, I don't, I haven't had any bad dates, like actually. Damn. Mm-hmm. So if you go on a date with Brenda, you might not get a second <laughs> one, but it's going to be good. It's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe this is also just my perspective and everyone I've ever right. dated is like, what the Too fuck? Positive. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, if you've never been on a bad date, uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, you were the bad date. Oh my yeah. God, this is like the naked neighbor. And exactly. You're either <laughs> you either are the naked neighbor or you see the naked neighbor. Yeah. Damn. Maybe everyone's, yeah, I mean, I don't know. But I mean, ignorance is bliss, right? I've only oh, had totally. great dates. Let's say this person you're going on a date with um, forgives you for being <laughs> for being such a bad date and you get to the third the you know, the stereotypical third date right. where it's like you guys are going to go home and fucking bump nasties. Sure. What's your go-to like slutty third date fit? Do you dress it up at all or do you, is it kind of just like what you normally yeah. would wear? What I normally would wear. Okay. Yeah. All right. You don't change for anybody. No, I think it's also like buying the dress for the job interview. You're portraying a whole character that you aren't, right? Mm. So, so you, you might, on yeah, I think so. Okay. I'll, honestly, that's mm. fucking that's great advice. Mm. Last question for meats and cheeks: What scent or cologne do you find most attractive on guys? Oh my god, I am not well versed on colognes, but it's super important. But I have nothing. I'm sorry. You just know it when you smell. Yes, <laughs> I have nothing. No the advice. Nose knows. The nose knows. The nose knows. It's super important, but I won't help you. Yeah. All right. Uh, third and final topic of the podcast, Brenda. How much money do you make? My day rate? No, just yearly, annual. Um, do people answer that? No. How many? <laughs> Oh, okay. I would say one in every no, 100 I mean, pods. Yeah. This is the one that sucks the most about fashion is that no one talks about how much they're making and I also won't. This is how the right. exploitation um, continues. Yeah, no salary transparency is bad for business. No pun intended. No, fully. I uh, Especially people... Uh, no, it's so bad. I just... <laughs> <laughs> and I also will not say. Um, <laughs> I have not made money from clients for years and it was only disruptive because I was problematic it's like the wrong word i was controversial mm. so i wasn't exactly friend like brand friendly yeah, that's, oh. that's changing a little bit now and because yeah. you're too I outspoken outspoken Damn. yeah problematic for, sure. for the payroll and you weren't no, even on twitter at this point i twitter i think will be my downfall like fully so um, and everybody same. else yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what it's there for i'm yeah. so i mean i'm <laughs> wait where was i going with this that you're not gonna answer the question yes well I get paid for social media, for example, I get paid a lot more than most people in my, because I'm a micro influencer, right? It's like 140K. Damn, if you're micro, we're a fucking <laughs> nano. <laughs> um, it's not a lot, but because I do so little, yeah. that ranks up the right. price to be, you know, if you're more exclusive, I would say. Also, now standing for something is worth something, but it wasn't really before. So my payment there is super, but if you check my Instagram, I mean, there's like, one thing every two months mm -hmm. but that is a like you mean like hashtag ad type hashtag ad i've never done that actually i don't know when the tax people will come for me same bro i'm still with like i will not yeah it's like not my aesthetic um <laughs> but <laughs> uh, uh uh going by fcc guidelines yeah, exactly. is not your aesthetic i, I actually in germany there's fucking different rules right yeah it's, it's super, it i think it's super strict. i don't know it's like can't um, like can't Anyways, okay, so I make money off of social media, but this yeah. is like once in a month, and then it's great. Um, make money through disruptive. Also, not that much. I make, m I would say, 80% of my money through consulting. Mm, and then the payment just varies how good they are for my CV, even though I don't talk about who it is. Mm -hmm. But um, that's the day rate. That's minimum my rent for a okay. month. Right, right, right. And I do get paid for my editorial work at O32C, which Fuck is yeah. unheard of. Are you a sal Is that the fashion director job? Is it salaried or is it... Fashion editor. I'm not a director. Oh. We've been calling you fashion director the entire podcast. No, I don't think you did. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think you did fashion. <laughs> and you're just oh. correcting us now two hours in. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No, we'll I'm sure just the fashion it. editor, which is... I'm the only fashion editor there. A title they made for me, which is very cute. Um, but it's not salaried. Or is it? Sorry. No, I am not an employee there because otherwise I couldn't do all of my other stuff. So this is not something I want. Got it. Oh, that's so it's kind of like better that way. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. yeah. And you got that German universal health care. Uh, oh, fully. Yeah. Besides clothes, mm -hmm. what do you like to spend your hard earned money on? Books and furniture. Books and furniture. Yeah. That's all. I, I mean, it. that's I spend more money on books, I would say. Well, this is like architecture books. I don't read that much. It's just I will. So like 
What's I will see you? a vintage Helmut Lang dress and it's like 300 euros too expensive right. but a 900 euro Ralph Simmons sealed thing Mark Bothwick shot it yeah. yes do you have more or less books than Carl Lagerfeld <laughs> did a little bit less I heard that he had three of each what really yeah I know he stacked one to them. rock one to stock I went to his um, so the announcement of the Met was in Paris la- six months ago the announcement of the theme it's a yeah. whole like 7am Anna Winter invites you everyone all the editors Ugh. come with their SUVs it's a whole like I thought Shut I was up. in Devil West Prada just fucking tweeted and <laughs> I couldn't um, oh no not you I mean Anna oh and uh, that was in his private library in Paris that I don't think you can, it's like open to the public and it was magical. Yeah. Like stacked the to the top. Photos are crazy. Yeah. And crazy. they're all stacked uh, horizontally Side- yeah, so sideways. he didn't have to bend his neck to, yeah. to read. So amazing. The, the no, spines. but books is the one thing. Also, since I'm making more money, which is really only the last two years that I'm making money, um, that's the one thing I will, yeah. Splash. Right, so um, and furniture also, but only secondhand. So same with, the, it has to increase in value. Your crib sounds so fucking fire. Come visit up. anytime. Yeah. I mean, it's we all over my Instagram. We're gonna have a I am six, the we're gonna have a like dinner there. <laughs> beige apartment is me. Hell yeah! All right, Brenda. Uh, thank you for coming on to the only podcast that matters. Before you get out of here and get into the paywalled bonus content in the afters, <gasps> oh my god, we would love to offer up some constructive criticism. And actually, we're not even to gonna me? charge you for this con- almost like kind of miniature consulting. Who yeah. says I like criticism? Well, it's constructive, so it's like we you I know s- we're new friends. Oh. We're doing amazing. We want to see you do even better. Oh no! Take it or leave it. You don't have to take it. Our films okay. won't be hurt, right. but like I highly suggest you take. Don't it. worry, we're doing a bait and switch. I'm there, worried. So yeah. Uh, my first piece of constructive criticism: um, wave the consulting free and go pro bono for the goddamn motherfucking boys. Our question for you would be: What would you immediately change about throwing fits? Okay. Well, I'm. Can I admit that I'm not a subscriber on the Patreon? That's Patreon totally to you? Fine. I'm sorry. There's only okay. you know four thousand of them. <laughs> Uh, so so I don't know everything that you offer, but I would think the best thing for you, I mean, A, a bit of public speaking, like a, oh. whatever your favorite brand does a trip and you are the podium speakers and interviewing someone, for example. I would okay. offer that as a service. Yeah. Like Dang it's a fine. BMW Yo, is doing an event. Yeah. So you are the two people in like interviewing yeah. whoever does the BMW. leather inside things. Yeah. You know, okay. Just, okay. I would cool. offer that. And then also, I don't think there's, how do you spread jobs for your community? So why can't you be the person that uh, Amy Leondora contacts when they are like, we need a new barista? Why can't this... <laughs> well, <laughs> this like, oh, like we, um, hate them. So finder's fee of like job yeah. placement for well, headhunters, for listeners? Well, n- maybe not. Job you don't hunters. even have to monetize it, but I think it would increase your well, industry. It's, it's in- kind of funny you say that. So like we, we haven't you formally do that? done that, but yeah. we have okay. a Discord channel, right? Mm-hmm. Which is just in a 24-7 chat room where like, Job listings do get posted in there. Okay. I think people do make connections, yeah. some personal, some professional. Yeah. Um, yeah it's I think so that's a great idea. hard in fashion to find good stuff. I know the Rick store, for example, they just took like six months to find a new store manager. So why don't brands pay you to advertise what they're looking for oh. at this moment? We that's do like private sales and stuff, which obviously like is to move okay. product, but like it could be cool, like the Throne Fits job board. Yeah, or mm. some type I think of that's what I would do. That um, paywall. Yeah, so that's you know, what I would do. Just pay to play, I bitch. think. That is B- the BOF one. BOF does that, right? Yeah. Sorry? BOF does that? BOF. Business yeah. fashion? B- no one reads BOF anymore. Oh, okay. Legendary. Yeah. Legendary. But like legendary. it's... Legendary. <laughs> Ever since Warren Sherman well, left. Yeah, I yeah. think... Um, well, we still read it for news, obviously. I mean, subscribe to well, BOF and paywalled. WWD. Oh, you don't read Hypebeast.com? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm sorry. Sometimes no, I read... Yeah, no. Um, well, Berlin, high snob. She's a high snob girly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shout out David Fisher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. That's right. Yeah. Shout out Willa. Shout out um, Mr. Snob. <laughs> Shout out Mr. Snob. Love Instagram, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, I think a blackboard of jobs and so that your listeners will have to listen to find out whoever is hiring right now. I don't know. I yeah, think that would thing. be... I don't know if... <laughs> Never mind. I'm not even going to say it. What? No. I put like people on like, oh, here's the email you email for like the job. And then like, wait a second. Am I now liable Vouching because for you? I put this fucking R word in touch with <laughs> HR over there? You know, I'm not, not trusting your audience to be qualified. What? Are you not trusting your audience to be qualified sure, for the job? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. He's smiling. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think that would be beneficial because okay. no okay. one reads these job offers anymore. And I have people um, 
all the time even if Tyson Abadi can you share this job can you do this there's not really a place I don't think also young people are on BOF finding out who's hiring true you know? I see a lot of shit on IG yeah like honestly um, mm -hmm. ALD was just looking to staff um, the new flagship that's opening up and I literally saw if you follow like the guys behind the guys exactly that work at the store, yeah you know, whoever you're gonna like, no I know half of half of job them. offers yeah. are now over Instagram yeah. but still I think that would be a nice thing to sure all right yeah Okay, that honestly, I didn't expect you to be so sincere in this very stupid segment of the show. <laughs> no, um, I think I think it's otherwise you're killing it. I think the memes are who does them? You both or like how, what's chat. the? With there's four people that do them, us and then two shooters. Robbie, oh, they're and Max. amazing. Yeah, thank you. They're and, amazing. Uh, they do the majority. They of do the lion's share for sure. Again, so shout okay. out to them. Um, okay, continuing with the theme of. Uh, pro bono consulting disguised as constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. uh, Brenda, mm -hmm. how would you style James and myself? What would you change about our fits? For an event? No, just, just, uh, just some broad strokes before we get you out of here into the paywall. I'm only a listener to the podcast, so I never watch anything. So I don't know what your usual yeah, fits. you've hung out with us twice now. Twice now? Yeah. Well, I think you're very New York. Oh. <laughs> you always support <laughs> local me? designers also, no? Uh, Love engineered it? garments, yeah. throwing fits. You know the fucking vibes. There's a lot you know of vintage vibes? too. Big Bean. Yeah, Big Bean. Metalwood. Vintage. Yeah, bro. I just was wondering if they're, you know, you being a fucking international No, I wouldn't citizen. change anything because okay. I feel... You, it, you wouldn't put us in hell. It feels like what's repetitive about you, repetitive in a good way, is the silhouette, right? Like uh -huh. you both know your silhouettes. I think branding-wise... legs? Yeah, all I was, legs, all torso. torso. <laughs> we all are legs, a walking like, yin-yang. Yin. <laughs> what's you together, your... we're the perfect man. <laughs> His head. <laughs> you said that. Um, I think once you know your silhouette, you kind of can build on that. And I yeah. think repetitiveness is the best way for branding mm. ever. Consistent. I was Uniform so, dressing. Yeah, I was so scared to dye my hair, for example. I had black hair. Do you want to have more fun? God damn it. <laughs> what? That was my question that I said I was going to And it was so <laughs> original. It's the title of a movie. <laughs> so uh, I haven't had that much more fun, but also... <laughs> so no. <laughs> but my life keeps getting better every week, oh, so I don't think it has anything to do with a blonde. I just really needed a change so bad. But branding-wise, it wasn't a super mm. smart choice because you would see an image of me and instantly... It, the one percent that know me otherwise no but um recognizability i think it's worth so much that's also what i do in my consulting work for um branding is you can't be in a different brand every day sure. and you know like people will not there's no people will not yeah. recognize you unless they're super fans so i think from what i've seen <laughs> you wear twice now that we've met <laughs> um it's a very yeah i like i like that you're repeating your silhouette know thyself exactly mm. all right exactly Brenda, thank you for coming on to the only podcast that matters. Where can the kids follow you? Would you like to plug something? What's going on? Well, I'm now on Twitter since three months. Brenda hashtag. Uh, and Instagram. Also on IG, Brenda mm -hmm. hashtag. Yeah, uh, Brenda hashtag Same everywhere. Handle. TikTok? Yeah. Yes. Brenda hashtag? Mm -hmm. Easy. Mm -hmm. Great. I wish I started sooner. TikTok is amazing. I don't talk there because it scares me. <laughs> Um, like and then you just talked for two hours and seven minutes. Yeah, so. but I don't talk. Yeah, but that's like I don't see the re feedback, right? I don't. Yeah. I'm well, not gonna look well, at it. Well, you might. <laughs> Only if you. I mean, honestly, normally when these things go incredibly well, I think you're gonna have a lot of nice messages that you will not open up in your. That dreams. I will not open. Um, chavis are true to size. Do not ask me <laughs> anything else. And size down on wallabies. Brenda, yeah. thank you for coming on to the Only Podcast. Of course. Matters. What a joy. I'm so honored to be here. We're honored that you would fucking shut up. Yes. Oh exactly. Okay. Jeff, take us out. It's like you hang up. No, you hang up. Yeah.